So you mentioned that you're aware of what Rocket Slack is. Yes. Right? I mean, I'm sorry. I said that. It's Rocket Chat. Rocket Chat. Yes. Uh, Rocket Chat is like a self-hosted version of Slack. I don't know how it works, to be honest. Okay. Um, I'm not that technologically savvy. Okay. And Rocket Chat was used, I mean, I'd say to the present day, and you may be right, maybe they stopped using it yesterday, but throughout the events, since they've been sued, the company has been using Rocket Chat. You mean 2018? I do believe that in the period tw after 2018, they were using ro Rocket Chat. Okay, were those logs preserved? I'm not really sure. Okay, were they searched ever? So here's my here's the problem I have with that specific question is because um, depending on the agreement with those particular servers, like for example, I know that Slack doesn't save all of the chats unless you're you know you pay them monthly some of these are free free plans and then it'll only save up to a certain period of time and then to go back to the to, to way prior chats you would have to reach out to slack itself in order to get those documents so i don't know that the company has access to those things going back that far know that they can go back four years well, here's what in I'm, their yeah. chat logs. Okay, here's what I'm really asking is the company sure. was sued in April 2018. Sure. All right, so let's go to May 2018. Mm -hmm. The company had possession of whatever the rocket chat logs were in May 2018, right? For what time period? For May 2018. For that month? Sure. Sure. And were anything done to preserve that? talked about rocket chat right another messaging system that was used was slack and do you know when the company stopped using slack um, i'm honestly i'm not sure it was it was a while ago it's been a while they have not used slack in a long time what does that mean i don't know what a long time is within the last couple of years okay what about since they've been can't go back to you to your entire universe of conversations they're not preserved okay because one thing i'm having some confusion on is because we have a mm -hmm. from council of record in this case that says the staff law is working okay do you know if that's accurate or not i don't know and i don't know what time period that would be from okay. you also said something about like you would have to reach out to slack for to check on this information has that ever been done i don't know if slack even preserves that information to be honest well, you're the one who said you would have to reach out to Slack. Yep, to did find the out. Did the company ever do that? I did not know. I'm not asking what you did. I'm asking what the company did. I don't know. Here's the thing, Ms. Paws, I, I did ask Mr. Zimmerman about it. This is the fifth time I've tried to take this deposition, right? And, and I did try to talk to Mr. Zimmerman. That didn't work so well. I tried to talk to Mr. Dew. Tried to talk to Mr. Karpova. So in terms of, of Ms. Karpova, so if you are going to be referring me to other people who've already been deposed, I don't care about what they say that I need to talk to them. I'm here to talk to you. And from what I hear you saying is that you don't know the answer to that question. I don't. Right? That's okay. Do you know anything about Basecamp? Do you know what Basecamp is? Yeah. Okay, so InfoWars employees, you don't know if they've used Basecamp to communicate about stories in the same way. I don't know. Yeah. So have you read just the depositions in this case, or have you read testimony taken up in Connecticut? I've read one or two of the depositions in Connecticut. I don't think I've read them all. Okay, well, here's the thing. Is Mr. Salazar testified up in Connecticut? Have you read I did not read his deposition. Okay. Well, he 
testify for because we've talked about this today, but I'm just wondering, okay. has, has there been any effort to find any conversation? I don't know. You've never reviewed any conversation with no. the face cam? No. Okay, uh, do you know who Kurt Nimmo is? Yes. Okay, Kurt Nimmo was the first to find Do you understand that? Sure. Did you read this deposition? Uh... Would it be fair to say that Plaintiff's Exhibit 13 is a base camp message from Paul Watson? The answer is right. And the next question is, and it's warning, quote, be careful to avoid stuff about crisis actors and claims that stories were published the day before the event. This is radical. This is evil. And I'll, I'm, I'm curious because I don't have any base camp messages. I certainly don't have that one, which is very interesting to me. Okay, that's my, going to be my question is you have not seen this message about crisis actors on base camp that's being referred to in Mr. Nimmo's deposition. No. If that document does exist, it's not something that was in front of him. I haven't seen it. Okay. He's, so Kurt Nimmo, you understand he's, tell me who he is. Well, I know who he was because he's no longer employed by the company, but I think that in a relevant time period, I believe 20, maybe 18 and prior, he was the head writer talk to him? I was not able to locate him. He's not a current employee, but I did make efforts to try to find out his current information, but we were not able to get in touch with him. What do you mean you tried to get, find out if you can make efforts? I just, I wasn't able to reach out to him. He was deposed in Hartford. Everybody has the same name. Okay, but I tried to reach out to him. Hold on, let's make sure yeah. I understand this. Sure. Because I thought you just said that you couldn't find his information. I tried to reach out to him. Go talk to Craig Nimmo, he's gonna have a phone record. Or your testimony is pretty good. I wasn't able to get in contact with him. I'm not, I'm not, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, did you call him? I called a lot of people. I think I did try to call him. But, but, but your testimony is. I didn't speak to him. Your testimony is that you were talking to somebody that you were calling. tried to get his contact information. I asked Melinda for his contact information. She didn't have it. Um, I don't know whether I called him and left a voicemail and he didn't pick up. I know I haven't talked to him, so I'm not honestly sure. Okay, so I just want to make sure when you say you're not honestly sure, not you are sure you haven't talked to him. I am what, sure I haven't talked to him. What you're not sure of is that you tried to talk to him. I know I asked for his contact information, but I'm not sure if I actually called. Let's, before we go on any further, sure. are there people you tried to talk to and couldn't other than Kurt? Do you know what pigeon is? Not the bird. No. Okay, pigeon's a message and communication system. Did you know that was used inside of InfoWars? I don't know. Okay, you didn't make any efforts to find anything about pigeon? No. You don't know anything that was preserved from pigeon? I don't know anything about pigeon. No. There are text messages between employees talking about that. You know, that was something that's happened. I'm sure it has. Okay. Do you know anything to try to figure that out? If there were any? If, if there is a.
fuckers. I think it came from council, so I, I okay. don't want to talk about my conversation. And with you've council. never talked to any employees about any other text messages. Um, no, I don't want to. I don't think I, that that's accurate. So I, when I spoke to Rob Dew, um, I had a long conversation with Rob. Dew. cell phone messages, text messages, or who produced them, or what may exist. Mm -hmm. You don't know. I think in terms of what was done, the employees were asked to review their phones. And again, you have no personal knowledge of that, and no information from any employee that says that that's not accurate, right? That's not accurate. Okay, which employee told you? Previously indicated, I think I spoke to Rob Dew about it, and I think Rob Dew indicated he searched his phone. I get that you testified that Rob Dew said he searched his phone. Yep. I'm asking you about conversations about the company's instructions to employees about their phone. Did oh, Rob I Dew don't, tell you I don't anything know. about that? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Have you talked about all the applications and messaging systems that employees have, have employees have messaged each other on in terms of preservation preserving documents? Did Now, Mr. Jones's text messages, when were those preserved? I don't know. When were they sent? I don't know. Do you know about Ms. Williamson's, the New York Times reporter's text to Mr. Jones that she did us? Do you know anything about that? Yeah. One of the things you didn't do here for this deposition or any of the briefings you were presenting, correct? I did. You don't, know, you don't know any of the issues that the plaintiffs raised in terms of what previous deposition was. Um, I know that there was an issue, there were issues related specifically to Ms. Karpova's deposition. Hey, chat. Mr. Dew's uh, deposition that he was part of. How's it going? I was listening, but aside that. Yeah, yeah I was playing on some Elden Ring. Like, in terms of specifically, to, what was uh, wrong with those depositions? You're not... Lovely little deposition by InfoWars people, because I find it entertaining to watch how utterly incompetent they are, and yet how much they try to weasel out of things they can't weasel out of. It's it soothes the soul. It soothes the soul. It's like chicken soup. Just like horribly, horribly depressing chicken soup. Chicken soup made from a baby? I don't know. Something sad. That's a big bear. That I try to hone in on the things that were most important. So I did try to address some of the things that were wrong with the last two deputies. Uh, Let's, Let's go faster. Let's go faster. It's all poison and you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And for instance, one of the things that was. Let, let me ask you this way. Do you believe Mr. Jones has produced all of his text messages?
But in any event, like I said, I don't know when he would have gotten a new phone such that he would have access to those messages. You read anymore. Mr. Jones's November 2019 deposition? I read the March 2019 deposition. I don't think I got to the November one. Mm, okay, because see, Mr. Jones testified something totally opposite of what you said. He okay. Got, he got new phones, but they have the same SIM card and off cloud storage, and he doesn't lose text messages. Do okay. you have any reason to dispute that? No. And so are you aware that I possess a text message that was sent to me from 2019 that says Sandy Hook in it and discusses Sandy Hook sent by a New York Times reporter? Do you know I have that no, message? No, I don't. Okay. I haven't reviewed any text messages. So in terms of why I have that message and why Mr. Jones didn't produce it or why it wasn't preserved, you don't know the answer to that. I don't. Can you summarize for me what the company knows about the investment? Oh, oh. No, not now. Can you summarize what the company does know? I mean, I, let me put it this way. Neil Hustle, the company has no relationship with Neil Hustle, right? Correct. Nobody at the company has ever met Neil Hustle. Doesn't, doesn't transact any business with Neil Hustle. No. Shouldn't have a ton of information about Neil Hustle, right? Um, I don't know that that's accurate. I'm sure that in relationship to the litigation, certain documents may have been produced. I'm so fucking for Neil. Neil. I see the That's what I'm right. Okay, you don't know what the company may have made. Before or after the litigation? Both. So before the litigation, I don't think that the company had any much, info, if at all, in information about the new house. Okay. What about after? Um, after, I am aware that there was some information about um, some legal issues that he may or may not have had in Connecticut. Um, you mean after the lawsuit was filed, somebody already found out about that? I, I believe so. Okay. Prior to this lawsuit, mm -hmm. in terms of its Sandy Hook coverage, as it... Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? In Marika's own words, hear me, demigods. My children, beloved, make of thyselves that which ye desire. Be it a lord, be it a god, but should ye fail to become aught at all, ye will be forsaken, amounting only to sacrifices. Oh, how old am I? Has the company ever done any research on your husband? Again, one of the things I want to make sure that you haven't reviewed is the plaintiff submitted. Wait, hold on, back up. Yeah, okay. One of the things you haven't reviewed is the plaintiff has submitted the previous exhibits in support of these sanctions to the company to start on this deposition. I didn't review that in the sanctions motion. Ms. Paz, I have handed you with the Marcus Exhibit 1. Um, do you see this email here from David Knight? Do you understand who David Knight is? Uh, I believe that well, he was no. a former... Evil dancing woman. Okay. Um, do you know why the night of June 19th, 2017 might be important in this case? Let's see what's going on up here, shall we? 
wanted to attack him as soon as they see me. Okay, that's the night that Mr. Heston appeared on Netflix. Okay. Yes. So that's the night. I think y'all have danced a little too long. Well, that's just me. Item around here somewhere, but it's probably gonna get me killed. That's okay. I've died before. I've marked that as exhibit two. That's also from the same day, right? Oh no. Is that really is that the 20th? It's the 19th. One is the 18th, and one is the 20th. Okay. Or 19th, sorry. Oh, 19th, okay. Um, and so this one is um, titled. Uh, it's a link to an article that, or I'm assuming is an article, but that's well, what it says. I was actually talking about the subject line being the one that's tied to it. Uh, yes, I think that's the name of the story in the link, yes. Probably in the body. The, probably the headline of that story. Yes. Right? That's what it looks like. So here we have Mr. Knight. Uh, also, on the other email that you're looking at, do you see a different email address, Seek the Truth? Uh, are you talking about Exhibit 1? Yes. Okay, and that's also another one that was employed, right? So what we have here is, contrary to what you had believed, Prior to this lawsuit, the company had indeed been conducting research on the customer. Um, I don't think that that's a statement. Um, Said some bad things about InfoWars. Said that InfoWars was saying the next thing that happened is that he goes up to the executive and he's going to say, What's happening here? Um, I don't know that. Okay, well, good news. If you make them mad, they will. have no idea how he got it, do you? Or they will attempt to. Right, but where'd he get the article? I mean, he put the. I know that he put a link in an email to himself and sent it to him. We don't know how he got that link, do we? I don't know how he got this link. No. You haven't talked to him, Mr. Knight, have you? I have not spoken to him. He's not a friend. You didn't even try, did you? I didn't try to talk to him. No. Okay. And so, this, interestingly enough, I asked Mr. Hogan, so you read her deposition, right? Yes. Okay, I asked her the same question. Has the company ever done any research on Neil Hustle? She told me the same thing. No, it's never done any research on Neil Hustle. And I told her, um, unfortunately, yes, it has. When, when I when you read that, did you go try to find out if the company had ever done any research on New Hustle? I wouldn't consider this doing research on New Hustle. Okay, well that's where we disagree. But in terms of, did you go to try to find out if the company had ever tried to get any information, or had been exchanging with itself any information about New Hustle? Um, aside from speaking to the individuals I've already said I spoke to, and doing the searches on the Dropbox for the no. Well, I mean, that's a good point, right? If you searched every document with Neil Huston's name in it, these documents would have come up, right? I think I did see these. Okay. Tell me all the sources of information for InfoWars knowledge about Neil Huston. I'm sorry, can you be more specific? I can't, no. No, the company had got information about Neil Huston. Some of it which it put out into the world on its videos. And I asked you to get prepared on the company's knowledge of the plaintiff. I want well, to know all the sources of information about the knowledge of the Some of the documents that were returned in my search were things that other people send to us. So, like, I'm sure you know that many of the emails are thousands and thousands of emails from the general public. Um, some of them 
to send information to InfoWars, to general InfoWars mailboxes that may or may not be See, like I said, there were some, he had some legal issues in Connecticut. Okay, here's what I'm not understanding. Because InfoWars has made multiple videos about the NSA. I mean, they're being sued for two of them. Right? When you say multiple, I don't, I don't know how don't many you're referring to, but I don't know how, I don't think that there are a lot of videos specifically naming Neil Heslin. Okay, well, let's just go with two. Sure. All right, let's talk about the two that they're being sued for. Yes. You know those two videos exist. I do. You know there are sources of information about Neil Hassan in those videos. Yes. Where did it come from? You mean where were they sourced from? Yeah, I want to know every piece of information about Neil Hassan that the company put on the air. Where did it come from? Um, I know that Owen Schroyer's video was specifically sourced from that article. I believe it was from Zero Hedge. So that was a source of that particular video. <clears throat> well, I don't think I've ever fought one of those before. That looks suspiciously like a god skin. Then the Megyn Kelly interview. Skin. Oh, they look so cool. Oh, I want one of their I want that twin blade so badly. Give me your soul, Godskin. Such, this is such a cool fight. No, the source of that video is the Zero Hedge article that I just referenced. Actually, and so that may have been quoted from the Zero, Zero Hedge may have used that as a source, but I'm not aware of Owen using that as a source. It's, it's shown on, like, right, that's the thing that's shown. It's Mr. Fetzer says, blah, blah, blah. Right, but I think that the source that Owen got it from was Zero Hedge, not from directly from Mr. Fetzer. Do you see what I'm saying? Sure, I mean, we could just keep cycling it. It could be I bank coin gives it to Zero Hedge, give it to somebody, give it to somebody, give it to somebody. Right. But the article that's Mr. Fetzer says, I thought, like, Mr. Fetzer's being quoted. Right, so he gets a Zero Hedge article. Yes. Somebody said, hey, you should look at this. And he looks at this, and he sees Mr. Fetzer says blah, blah, blah. And he says, I'm going to put this on the end. Right? The source in the Zero Hedge article. Right. Whatever the source that Zero Hedge had produced. Right, because Zero Hedge is not a 
That's not a person, right? No. That's a completely anonymous blog, right? I don't think it's a blog. I don't, I don't know what else it would be. What else would it be? Um, I think that... Let's try these guys. Ancestral follower it is then. So if that is knowledge, the company has about 20 people. Right. Are there any people from whom the company received information about Star Trek? I'm sorry, can you hear that? Yeah, are there any people from whom the company received information about Star Trek? the wrong way is a damn shame so you'll you'll concede to me sitting here today there 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 are possibly documents in this case that have even been produced that have scarlet's name on them that you may have not read that's what you're telling me perhaps okay so in other words when you did a search of documents for scarlet Pace, were you searching the entire production did you have a capability to search the entire production i have a capability of searching the production on our not make sense to you, though, after you read this Karpovas definition and you saw the most of Wolfgang Halbert directly harassing these fools? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you think then, oh, maybe there are documents for this? So you still own that.
Oh, for fuck's sake. Seen that one now. Mm -hmm. Where has the company gotten information about Scarlet Rose? As far as what's been, what I, I'm, I guess I, I don't understand the question. So, when you say where we have gotten this information from Scarlet Rose, you mean is this information that we have sourced on her? Like we've gone out into the world to try to find, or this is just information that people are giving us? At any Let's, let's talk about what knowledge is. Because I want to make sure you understand what he's talking about. This is the, point, the company's knowledge about the plans. Mm -hmm. You would agree with me there's various ways that a company can acquire knowledge. Sure. Go get that knowledge. You can go out and like, go to the library and start looking stuff up, right? Sure. So you might be sending an email. Sure. You might watch a video. Somebody outside the company got a phone call. Damn it. I wish I had timed that better. That would have been so good. That would have been so cinematic. That would have been so cinematic. You see what I'm talking about? Exhibit 3? You see it has FSS TX04, I'm sorry, 043896? Yes. Okay, that's a company that's been produced out of the company's corporate files. Why does the company have this? What is this? This is, do you know who this is pictures of? Yeah, that's, that's not Do you recognize where this top picture is taken? I'm sorry, I didn't know in the top left. Do you know, do you know where that's taken? Uh, I don't know how the Do you know about the cop about Scarlet Rose and the cop? Um, I Ow. 
you. Ha ha! Very well could have been happening. Now, buddy. Before he got on the show. I don't know. Or during the time he was on the show. He was on the show for a pretty discreet period of time. What time do you think that is? Uh, he came into the company's purview in early 2014. And then he appeared on the show through mid to late 2015. And then he hadn't been on the show. And then the information that Mr. Howard gave the company. Oh, I wanted that goddamn thing so bad, and I've got it. Hell you! About Sandy Hook, what he said. You mean his 16 points? I need what, 22 decks to use this properly? He adds to them periodically, but if that's what you're referring to, he has to wear them. Okay, and the company kept broadcasting that well into 2017. Um, I don't know that I would agree with him with broadcasting. Let's, let's put a pin in what InfoWars may have been doing in the universe in 2017. We'll come back to that. Sure. Do you, does the company contend Miss Lewis is a gun regulation advocate? I think Miss Lewis operates a nonprofit organization. I think I did read some material disclosure in the discovery materials that she operates a nonprofit uh, for school safety. for, but I know that there are different interpretations as to what school safety means. Okay, but I, mean, I just want to put this really clear. You, sure. seem to, you seem to be trying to insinuate that there is a potential interpretation of Miss Lewis's charity. Is that accurate? I don't oh. know, but what I'm saying is she operates a nonprofit. That nonprofit has a goal and a stated directive and however anyone wants to interpret that is a matter of opinion but she operates a nonprofit charity I, I get that does the company contend she's a gun regulation advocate I guess that depends on someone's definition of what school safety means. that's why I'm asking what the company contends does the company contend that she is a gun she could be depending on someone's opinion I'm not asking someone's opinion I'm asking the company's opinion. Does the company contend she's yeah, this is the shit that InfoWars constantly pulls. It's I'm just delaying she's tactics. Company. Who knows, whatever. I don't want to I want does the company contend that she is? In the opinion of individual people that work for the company, she could be. That's my So that it does, does they don't know. That's not what I'm saying. What could does not Opinions, though, and you need to testify. Mm. That's a murky Go to area. hell, you I think that's a murky area is because you piece of individuals, shit. they have their own specific opinions. Everybody's opinions are different. Like, so for example, there are people within the company. According to Citizens United, companies are people, so that means that the company has to have an opinion. Unless it's InfoWars' position. That in may not be as interesting. Citizens United was decided incorrectly. One person may want to cover a certain angle of Sandy Hook that another person may not want to cover. That is within their discretion and their opinions as writers and as coaches. So, um, I mean, personally, am I sitting here today saying that she's a gun control advocate? No, but what I'm saying is I think that the hosts and writers at Infowar, in their opinion, could interpret that as being gun control advocacy. Do they? Individually, as individual writers and individual hosts, I can't testify as to what they think. All I right, know let's just testify then to what the company thinks. Sure. Is she a gun control advocate? Does, does the company contend that? And hold it, before you answer that, sure. do you understand I'm going to trial? I need to discover what the company is or is not going to argue about these claims, what knowledge it has, what its contentions are. You, I think it's fair don't you think, that if the company is going to contend Scarlett Lewis is a gun advocate, I get to know that, right? I think it is a reasonable um, interpretation of what the company's position is. Yeah. Um, I Of 
Philanthropy Ever Charity? Yes. Teaching emotional intelligence to children in schools? If that's what it does. Okay, so first of all, let's start here. You have no idea what the Strong Emotions Charity is, right? I have not done any independent research on the charity. Okay, so in terms of asking what the company contends Miss Scarlett Lewis does with her charity, in terms of what its advocacy is, the company has no idea. Right? I know what she says that it does. Okay, what does the company know that Miss Lewis says it does? What she says it does. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know whether that is an So, in case anyone is not obviously understanding what the fuck is going on here, this woman was paid $30,000 by InfoWars to delay and obstruct this deposition. Uh, all of her answers are intentionally formulated to be vague. By the way, she's a lawyer who generally practices in criminal uh, the criminal side, not civil side, so she's not familiar with the civil side, but she's familiar with how to answer questions in order to not get nailed down. That is why she was chosen. She was chosen because she has the ability, in her experience, to answer a question, but not answer the question, which is exactly what InfoWars wants out of their people that represent them in depositions. Their previous corporate representative looked like a moron because she wasn't prepared and brought a bunch of articles about false flags to the deposition. So in order for them to maintain an appearance of compliance with this lawsuit, which is something they're very badly at, bad at doing and uh, recently got struck really hard for exactly this type of shit and they got charged a ton of money for it by the court, What they're doing is, as I said, they're just obstructing everybody's ability to actually get things done by dragging it on as long as possible, hoping that the parents of the kids who died at Sandy Hook drop the case or something along those lines because it takes too long to get an answer from them back. Uh, it's why they didn't disclose all of their documentation. It's why all of their documents were mysteriously missing that sort of shit from all of the places that they were supposed to be uh, and other assorted stuff that has happened in this lawsuit uh, basically what you need to know is InfoWars in case you hadn't quite guessed yet is a garbage company made by a garbage person and is built as a scam uh, they are currently hiding a ton of money from the actual InfoWars uh from the actual InfoWars um, company itself by offloading it into shell companies that are all owned by Alex Jones or his family members. Uh, and they're doing this with the express purpose of trying to hide money from the court so when the court comes to bank, to, to like straight up take all of Alex Jones' money because he was hiding it, they won't be able to because it'll be in a different like alphabet soup of corporations. Now, Luckily enough, we know about this, and we know about this because of the smart lawyers who are handling this case. So, as you go through this, just remember that all of their weird, fancy little plans aren't working out so well for them, and they're probably going to end up paying a ton of money, and Alex Jones will be like a guy in his basement screaming into the void before long, and we can have a slightly better world because of it. Uh, but we'll see, you know. Who knows how long this could take. It could take many more years. Probably not. It'll probably be over at the end of this year, honestly. Um, with how fed up the court is because of Alex Jones and his companies. Uh, but yeah, just be aware of what's going on. Actual statement of fact. There might be something surreptitious that Scarlett Lewis is actually having. She might not be telling the truth about what her journey is. I don't know. Point. I haven't done any research right. into the okay. company. I was I was having a trouble because I wouldn't see that the 
company's knowledge about what Ms. Lewis does, you are taking Ms. Lewis at her word. But because the company can't verify that and has done nothing to verify that, you can't say. That's right. Gotcha. All right. Is this a good time for, oh, yeah, you have you water. Oh, no, I'm just, I would just like another water. Yeah, you need a, well, hold yeah, on. Yeah, can we can take I, a, uh, a potty break? Yeah, because we got a good, we, this, this is will this work. a good break? This is fine. I, I had oh, a few fucks. I ask. hate people that call it a potty. Thank you. Oh boy, that was hot. What it believes is a fight I didn't want to have, but okay, whatever. Hi, my name is uh, Jake. I'm the widower of Ruth. You could say I'm ruthless. About Mr. Posner individually or. And on it. Both of them. I agree that the company. Relationship with honor. Well, it's published. Things for Mr. Posner, right? Not, not honor. Like Mr. Posner's email address. Put that on here, right? As far as its connection to honor, I believe so, yes. No, Lynn Posner at gmail.com. You mean his personal email uh -huh. address? Perhaps, I'm not sure. Well, you've watched that episode, right? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, that Leonard Posner is the plaintiff in this case. I could be wrong about that, but I think he's the plaintiff. Basically, he's the guy suing Alex Jones for defamation against him because they, he called Sandy Hook a false flag and said that the parents were crisis actors. Yes, uh, so you're aware. The agrees its employees research business filings related to Mr. Boston. Are you referring to a background check? Okay, I don't know that there was any independent research done as far as the company. I know that there was a uh, discussion about the PO box at U-Haul um, that was associated with the company. Um, I don't, I don't remember seeing any records related to the filings. Yes, I've read, I've read the articles. So you've read the articles the company wrote about. There's articles that links to it, right? Oh, okay. I don't remember. You, you wouldn't dispute that, though. You don't know what I'm talking about? I don't remember. Okay. Or um, you understand what I mean when I talk about independent media solidarity? Yes. Okay. Can you describe to me what independent media or independent media solidarity, sometimes called IMS? Can you describe to me what that is? Uh, I'm aware that there was a documentary that was produced by that company. Call them a company, but they were a loosely collected group of individuals that produced a uh, documentary about Sandy Hook in early 2014. Um, and then that Rob Dew, I think, did a, did a show interviewing anonymously the people that were involved in that. God damn it, it was one of those fuckers. Sure. Okay. Um, you would agree with me that it regards the sourcing of the videos in plaintiff's petition, IMS was a source for some of InfoWars saying they're coming. Which videos? Tell me, any of them? Were they a source for any of them? No, I think the only real source for the video, any of the videos was that, that, um, video that Rob Dew did interviewing 
in any, uh, me, um, any kind of videos that they already have. Alright, well, do you know the video we were talking about with the PO box and the address? Sure. Okay, they were on that video too, right? Who? Independent uh -huh. Media Solidarity? Yeah, Gus. There were guests on that video? Uh -huh. Giving out information about Mr. Park? You don't remember that? That I must have? Uh huh. I don't know. Okay. So I take it you haven't tried to talk to those people. No. Alright. Those people are not associated with me. I get that. I believe me, I understand that. What I'm saying is those people. Let's put it this way. If those people were quoted mm -hmm. in the February 12th, 2015, that's in plaintiff's petition. If that is the case, if they are quoted in there and talk in there and provide information about Mr. Potter, mm -hmm. whatever they had to say, you, you don't know right now. Right? No, I don't know. I mean, whatever they had to say, that was their sourcing. So we were just reporting on their sourcing. I get it. Okay. So, in terms of, so if those people are quoted and appeared and talked and gave information about Mr. Potter in February 12th, one thing we can agree with is you haven't spoken then to everybody who was quoted in that video. If they did appear, right? No, I didn't talk to the people quoted in the video. Okay. You're familiar then, um, the article I'm actually referring to, maybe this will help us for our timeline, you had said early 2014. I actually know there's a December 9th, 2014 article called Internet Censored Viral Sandy Hook Truth Documentary. So would you agree with me that this is probably the end of 2014? 2014 or 2015? I'm 2014. Sorry. Right, that's when the video was hosted by InfoWars? Um, I could check my notes on that, but I thought it was in the beginning of 2014. Rob D did a um, We Need to Talk About Sandy Hook segment, which was the title of the documentary. Maybe on the next break, you can check your notes. To refresh sure, it. sure. Because it was December 9th, 2014. Okay. Um, and you, you have an awareness that the company actually hosted that video for distribution, right? What do you mean by hosted it? Or like, it has a YouTube channel company, right? It did. Okay. And at that time, the company hosted that video. stuff perfect it's kind of the build i'm going for published in mr d's broadcast um to show them the viewership source of the material so that's not what i mean actually okay um what i mean is that independent media cell and solidarity was having some trouble keeping its video up online and infowars agreed to distribute and host the video on its own youtube page do you understand that? i don't know that okay and uh, that was the first copyright strike that Mr. Posner got against the company. That was that was where that all started. You didn't understand that that was the first issue? I understand that that is an issue that he's raised in his petition, but what I guess I'm having a problem with is the terminology you're using is agreeing to host it. So what the company does is takes a piece of information that is in the media and it will uh, see what is newsworthy. And the position or in the case of independent media solidarity, this video had been viewed many millions of times and it came to the company's attention because of how many views it was getting. And so that's how it came into the purview of the company to begin with. And then once it comes into the company's purview, what will happen is they will, you know, for whoever, whatever host it was, in this case it was Rob Do, will want to do Oh, come on. How to get access to the information to the viewership. Fucking so, right. That's the only problem I'm having is just your terminology. Saying hosting. Yes. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Definitely gotcha. All right. 
So what I want to do is I want to show you a document, but unfortunately the way it's been produced makes it pretty unreadable on this page. So I'm going to enter this into the record and then I'm going to show it to you electronically. You understand what I mean? Yes. You see, because here's an article. And unless you've got a really good magnifying glass, you're not going to be able to see it. This, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the record and then hopefully we're going to be able to, to get to the court reporter a much more readable copy of this. Um, but luckily this is a video that, I mean an article that's produced that we all have. Um, so here's the copy, you'll be able to see the headline. And I just want to show you just the beginning of this article. So first, I'm going to mark this as Exhibit 4. And can you look at that and you, you can see the headline of this, right? You can read that part of it? Yes, I can okay. see the headline. Okay, and that headline is Internet Censors Viral Saying No Truth Documentary? Yes. Okay, now I want to show this to you electronically. And I'm going to give you my screen here. It's a touch screen, so you can just scroll. And I'm just going to come over here so I can show it to you. Can you see the same article? Now, what I want to show you here is if you go down here. Last Monday, an organization known as the Independent Media Solidarity released an epic documentary entitled We Need to Talk About Sandy Hook. They it's hosted the on their own site as well as YouTube. Within hours, the was well on its way to going viral. However, its success was short lived. Shortly after InfoWars began hosting the video, the following Tuesday morning, it was suddenly removed from YouTube due to a copyright claim by the account. I read all that correctly? Yes. All right. So while you may have a problem with my terminology of InfoWars hosting the video, InfoWars doesn't have a problem with that terminology, correct? Um, so this article was written by Mr. Salazar, okay. so Mr. Salazar, that's the terminology that he used. I don't know that the company necessarily endorsed that terminology, but... Well, it published this, didn't it? It did publish this, yes. Okay. So I want to read a little more of this article, okay? Sure. And I want, right here, we have some areas. You see how there's some highlighted areas? Okay. We're to basically agree that any time you have a highlighted area, it's an sentence that has a lot of stop in the highlighted area. Do you think you could read us what we see here in the article right now? Just the highlighted portion? No, no, actually, then go through the whole part, but just at the end of the highlighted portion so you can stop because I'm going to want to ask you questions. Has it reportedly a parent of one of the children supposedly killed at Sandy Hook and is an outspoken critic of the claim the shooting to be a stage event that is no Yes, yeah. that first sentence there where it says that Posner is reportedly a parent mm -hmm. of a child who supposedly died at Sandy Hook. Yes. The company now admits this is a parent. He is a parent of a child who died at Sandy Hook. That's correct. Okay. Can you keep going into the article here? It was noted in the documentary that he is also the chairman and CEO of Taxware, a company that specializes in... So something that you guys wouldn't necessarily know if you didn't watch the previous uh, deposition, and like, why would the fuck would you? You're not me. Um, what you fucking just die. Uh, anyways, um, one of the things that they couldn't get the former corporate representative to do was to acknowledge that the company now says that Sandy Hook was real. Like, she would not answer that question and she would avoid it. So it's good to hear that this new corporate representative at least understands basic human dignity, even if she doesn't understand, like, how to be a good person. And the removal of internet slander, internet defamation, mugshots, defamation, character, and online public records. This guy's, quote, this guy's company will come in handy to understand the Pope's perpetrators with prior and in that section right there where it's talking about Mr. Paul's business, right, and, and how it could be helping save the The company admits that that was reckless. Publishing this person. I hate Spears. Do you agree with that or not? No, that was not 
Looks like that person's company. Correct, and the company was publishing, right? That chose to he's, publish that. He's quoting someone else's opinion. Correct. Yes. That person's pin opinion that he is quoting and that the company decided to publish and give to its viewers. So far the company away. now admits that that opinion is reckless speculation. Does no. it admit that or not? No. Okay, the company does not believe that was reckless speculation. No. Okay. no. Can you read the last part of the form? This last paragraph? Please? Sure. After InfoWars swapped out the video for an alter alternate copy, the video was again pulled, this time, quote, due to a copyright claim by Honor Network, there's a misspelling in there, end quote, a group which seeks, quote, to bring awareness to hoaxer activity and to criminally and or civilly prosecute those who wittingly and publicly defame, harass, and emotionally abuse the victim of high profile tragedies and or their family members, end quote. Honor Network is apparently also linked to Posner. Okay, and then you see where it says also linked to Posner, there's an internet link there, right? Uh, Apparently also is looks like a link. The oh, words oh, apparently and I also. Think I'm actually confused on this. Oh, okay. The whole thing looks like a link. Yeah, yes. Okay. okay. So there's a link there directing their audience that says honor is apparently linked to Posner. I don't Correct? know where that link leads though. I don't either. I was actually I was gonna know like I was just wrong with asking what what information does the company have about the Posner being linked to Posner? I don't know where that leads to, so I don't know how to answer it. Okay, so when you saw this article saw that the company was disclosing information, not merely about Nick Posner's personal business, but about the non-profit charity fund that was targeted in the main app. And you saw that they were disclosing that. Did you follow up on this thing? I don't know that that links to personal information about Mr. Posner. Mr. Uh, of Honor, sure. the company's position is that he's engaged in anti-First Amendment activity. Uh, so I know about a 2013 email that I thought you were talking about, mm -hmm. which is Mr. Posner writing to him, and then Mr. Watson replying to him, saying, sir, we haven't done the whole actor's thing. We think the tragedy is too. very real. And so then you think there's another, there's, 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 there's trying to set up a phone conference between Mr. Posner and Mr. Watson? Yes. Okay. It was in the production that I read. And then, do you think that that, that was a series of communications that that 
that's the only communication the three companies have with them? Uh, I'm sure there are others. That's the one that Oh, I am fucking late. I hate shield so much. There was a discussion back and forth about trying to schedule one. All right, years later. company in this case has produced emails between Mr. Posner and Rob Dew a couple of years later in 2015. That's not something you've seen. Or what, I'm sorry. I'm okay. Let me pull that back. Sure. If the company has produced documents in 2015, years later, Why it's upsetting to me. Right? You can understand why it's upsetting to pretty much any piece of person, right? And the company understands. I understand that. The company understands that now as we're sitting here. Okay, let's do that. That's great. That's what I'm talking about. Talk a little bit about how that uh, the articles in general come to be, but um, that article I believe was written by Mr. Salazar. And as I said, there are certain people in the community that are more interested in the topic. Of course. Fight my way through an entire caravan, get the item, and then proceed to get killed by a guy with a poor stick. Write what you want to write, um, you know, so they would go and source things from the current day's news on uh, this particular occasion. Uh, Mr. Salazar viewed uh, some footage of a, I want to say it was a protest in Pakistan following a school shooting there, and it was a BBC News correspondent article um, with video that he linked to his article. Um, and that has since been edited to take out the, the section that he was relying on uh, regarding that particular uh, claim. But more specifically, it was the reporter from BBC walking past a wall of pictures. Uh, I think you know what I'm talking about, the wall of pictures. And let's call him by his first name, but essentially photo was on that wall, and that correspondent from the morning that he did of that particular tragedy, uh, he also sourced that material from some Facebook posts that were on the school's web Facebook page, 
um, and from there wrote that article. So um, as far as the question goes, the title, the reason why, again, is in parentheses, is because of the confusion or perhaps mistake that these other news articles, these other news sources were making as the representation of that Oh, these guys are fucked. That's why and I don't mean that like in a good way. I mean these guys are fucking terrifying. Do you know what question? You asked me about the title and whether or not the company knew at the time the title would be upsetting. Bingo. Okay. So can we get back to that? No, the company didn't know it would be upsetting, and, the, and I just explained the reason why. Because the reason it was in parentheses was to make sure that it was understood. Purpose and the content and the position the article was making at the time. Okay. Um, Mr. Posner had previously made the company aware that these sorts of stuff was upsetting, right? Yes. Good Christ! What the fuck was that? Mr. Salazar was really interested in Sandy Hook victim dies again in Pakistan. Um, that's not Mr. Jones. That's Mr. Salazar, right? Yes. Okay. Mr. Jones doesn't necessarily endorse that, is what you're saying. That's correct. Okay, great. And you remember about a month after that, that happened, that January video about Sandy Hook victim dies again in Pakistan. Then, in a month later, Mr. Jones made a video heavily about Mr. Posner after Mr. Posner got that video. Do you remember that? Uh, if you could let me know which video we're talking about. Yeah, that's February 12th, 2015. It doesn't have a title. I was actually hoping maybe you could tell me. Does it have a, um, well, the company uses a bunch of, uh, a combination of letters and numbers. If you could tell me the. No, I don't know the. the okay, what's the date? Uh, February 12th, 2015. To help you, it's a video we've been talking about. The PO box out here. Oh, you know what? That's. I think I said early on in that in, in our conversation that I wasn't able. To, I didn't see that video on the Dropbox. I saw the article, but I didn't see the video on the Dropbox. I think we talked about that Wait, early what, on. What? The article that talks about the U-Haul and the map. I'm pretty sure there was an article about it. An article about that? I thought there was an article. I thought I saw an article. I thought we talked about it. Okay. But it's I don't like think that I goes saw along that video. with the February 12th, 15th, 2015 show? February 4th, you said? 12th. 12th. Yeah, I don't have that as been reviewed by me, the okay. video. All right. That's Did you the video review? Okay, so when you found out that you didn't have any documents about that video, I mean, I'm sorry. When you found out that trust you didn't it, I don't trust it, I don't trust it, I don't trust it. Fuck that place. That I did. So that's why I said I'm pretty sure I saw an article on it. Okay. No, I'm in about the video, not maybe an article. Oh, no. I, so I did try to reach out to, we have somebody that is um, trying to help us find documents. So there's, as you're aware, there's various litigation in multiple states. And various things have been produced, and I'm not really sure where they were produced. Um, so I did try to, we have, a, we have or had at one time a liaison trying to help me out with that. I did ask him to try to find it for me and he wasn't able to locate it. Okay. Um, I need to note for the record that we have actually just been uh, joined by my co-counsel, William Parker. Ms. Pons, I have handed you what I've marked as Exhibit 5. I take it you've never seen this document before, right? Names, Specifically, this guy. 
20 uh, different dates dates right so there's about 40 43 or 45 videos that i watched each right, of that's whom, not all in right. plaintiff petition though right no but the entire universe of sandy hook videos sure. is probably about 40 43 videos or 45 videos something like that well, we're going to need to talk about what that number is we'll talk about sure. that later but when you discovered that you did not have access to the february 12 2015 video Oh, I don't like how she talks. She's condescending as fuck, dude. February 12th, 2015. Correct? No, I didn't. I don't think I reviewed it. So you see how it has up here in giant red letters, do not upload any video of show to YouTube? Yes. You can't tell me anything about that, right? I don't know why that's there. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. That's like... I don't know, unfortunately. Sorry. And so you wouldn't know who put that there? I, I don't know. I think that generally speaking, um, just based on my conversations with... Um, with, uh, well, Daria. hold on, can I, can I stop you before you answer that? Well, I just know who produces these documents in general. Right, but right. I want to caution you not to make guesses or inferences based on what you know. Right, I don't know who produced a specific video, but based on my conversations with uh, Daria, the assistant producer uh, started uh, producing these, these types of logs to make it easier to try to find video clips later on. Because she she said it's like finding a needle in a haystack. It was ultimately, you know, they were saved on a drive, but there was no real way to search for those clips. And so you know, if one of the hosts said, "Hey, I want to find this clip," nobody would really know on what day. So they started producing logs to make that easier to see what what they were talking about on a specific day. But as far as which producer damn it, this, which that's bullshit. That's some bullshit right what there. What employees played what role in this show? I know a a producer would have produced this. An associate producer would I'm have produced sure. this. But I'm I sure don't a know. Would have been right, right. Okay, but no, my question is you don't know what employees played in this particular role. Oh, fucking invaders, my dudes. Just looking, for, um, looking at the document, I could tell you who played a role in producing in the production of the video. So. Alex Jones hosted it, and Rob Dew and David Knight were also co-hosting it. Right, I can read the document. Right, and then it's also citing to a Don Salazar's article. Sure. So, but, those... But, I mean, in terms of who produced this, we don't know. Produced the document or the show? The show. I just, well, you mean the employees that were working on that particular day? Yeah, that I want to know who the producer was. Like you have a document? I, uh, I think you requested for us to try to find out who was working on each particular day. I know what I requested. I'm asking for Right. I think that we've, we've made that determination. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not asking if you made a determination. I'm asking if you have a document. I can, if I could consult with counsel, because I think that. Oh, hold on. I don't want you to consult with counsel about what I just don't that. have the list on me right now, but I believe that we have a list of who was working on this show on that particular day. All right, that's the same thing as her home. Okay. I think Attorney Blogs is going to do that. Okay. Well, I'm going I'm just handing this to you to just, first of all, if you can verify for me, this is the list that you've created. What is this? 
So in request, in response to your request as to who had been working on the days that um, that various videos in the petition had been produced, uh, the company went back into its records and searched, essentially searched, um, you know, its record, its its in internal records to determine who was working on those particular days. Okay. Um, who prepared this one? You know what? I, I'm not 100% sure who prepared it. Did you, I, get, did you get it from council? Or I got it from council, so I don't know who prepared it. Okay. Um, can you hand me back real quick? Because I sure. have a copy of it. And I'll hand it back to you for this question. Okay, what I'm seeing here is lists of names for 10 different videos. I know there are other videos aside from these, these sure. particular videos, because like we said, there's there are there are forty something videos, maybe forty five videos. So, so there's, there's certainly some. Of them. Yes. And then part of that was you were to get up to speed on the employees who were involved in those videos. Um, I know that we are talking currently about this February twenty fifteen video. I'm just asking you. That's on here. Yeah, you were asked to get up to speed on. Right. I don't know these dates uh, offhand. I don't know if these are the dates of those particular videos. Certain is it's not all of the videos in front of the petition. I don't know. I didn't produce this, so I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. All right. Can I say that again? Sure. Okay. So when you got these documents here of who was working. And they gave these to you. Yep. Did you inquire if these are all the videos in the plaintiff's petition? No. I don't know who produced that. Okay. What do the highlights mean? I don't know. I did not highlight them. Okay. So you didn't ask what these highlights mean? Right? No. Okay. Well, I noticed there's this one day. For, so I got like one day here. We got September 25th, 2014. And I'm seeing about a dozen people on here. Um, and then I see like 12, 27, 2014. There's only one day. Do you know what that is? May I see it? Yeah, sure. Was he the only guy working that day? Or what's going on there? I don't understand why there's just one name. That means to me that based on our records, that's all we know about who was working that day. So, you know, part of the problem that I was indicating earlier, and I, and I know that um, it's, it may not make a whole lot of sense because you look at a media corporation like, you know, CNN, and they have very, very intricate records, and they have very intricate procedures and policies. I've spent a lot of time in the last week with this company, and it's not that way. So there are not a lot of records. Um, there aren't a lot of um, communication between departments. So, you know, generally speaking, in the event that there were people working, like in production in one department, uh, sometimes we just wouldn't know in another department. Like, so in all likelihood, what happened with these records was that um, our HR person went through and tried to figure out who was there that day. But um, that doesn't mean she went to the production department and personally questioned everybody. And I certainly didn't do that. Were you here on this day, this day, this day, this day? You know what I'm saying? So I do. Um, when I, and I believe if, I believe Melinda did that, um, you know, to the best of her information, tried to get these lists. But like I said, because they don't talk to each other, uh, the different departments, and there's no real... So this is something she brought up earlier as well. She seems, she keeps talking about how like InfoWars in, internally, their departments don't talk to each other. And I don't know about you, but I've never worked in a place where that's true. Um, and if that is true for them, that would be something that would be set up as like a, a thing for a reason. 
it's kind of like a cell structure in my in my mind. It's sort of like a cell structure, so that you can shield every you can shield yourself with ignorance of everyone else's actions, and nobody can actually be held responsible because nobody actually knows what's going on at any one time. Um, which to me is sus, sus as fuck, right? And I think to a lot of people that would come off as suspicious. Generally speaking, when you're operating in such a manner as to hide a whole bunch of intelligence, uh, or like make it intentionally obtuse, uh, it means you're working in, in like something that's not above board. Like, so to me, it, it honestly, it sounds just like everybody in InfoWars knows that this is a huge goddamn grift and that they are doing it just to make a ton of money off of everybody. Um, so, yeah, for to me, it sounds like InfoWars is legitimately just doing this to make a whole bunch of money. Has been doing that since the beginning, and they don't. none of them believe this in a way that, like, say, somebody who is a practicing, uh, like, anyone of a practicing religion would believe something. Or, like, how I believe that science is probably our best way to, like, figure out shit, right? No, instead they have this... Fucker. Oh, you're gonna make me actually fight you, aren't you? Ah, hold on. Build you want to, son of a bitch. I'll do it again. Also, what fucking company doesn't keep payroll and log hours? It's, it's hard to give a definitive answer as to who was there that day. What I'm trying to get at, though, is I understand you're telling me a lot of stuff about why things were hard and all this sort of stuff. What I'm trying to get at is some of these some of these entries have, like, a ton of people's names, like a dozen names. Right. And some of them only have, like, one or two. And, and from what I understand you're saying is, is you were making certain inferences about why that is true. I think the you reason... You don't know why that's true. You're just making inferences. Well, yes, I think the reason why that is is because that was the only information uh, Melinda was able to source for those particular days. Did you talk to her about this list? I didn't talk to her about this list specifically, but I've, I've spoken to her about... Of know, course not. ...why there aren't... Why would you have talked to her about things that were asked directly sure. about in the previous deposition? Makes no sense. Okay, okay, it's so the shit. It, do you know what Nico Acosta did for this video? For this 2015 video? Um, Nico Acosta uh, did the programming for Alex Jones, the Alex Jones show. So his job was to yes, such that there were guests available. Um, oh, uh, Christ, I forgot how hard that bitch hits. Notice that David Knight and Travis Knight are both on this list on this video. Um, David Knight. Yes, I think David Knight per article per exhibit five was one of the hosts. That's one of the people you didn't talk to. Right? I did not talk to David. No. Okay, he's Josh. Not a I understand he's not a current employee. I get that. Josh Owens, he's on this list, right? Yes. I'm just going to show you who Josh Owens is on this list. Yes. Um, um, did you speak to Mr. Owens? Um, Mikhail Phelan's on this list, right? Sure. I don't have a copy of it in front of me. I'm just as yeah, you're reading okay. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what did Mr. Thalen do with this video? I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Just, I just want to clarify, just because they're on this list, 
doesn't mean they had anything to do with this video. In fact, somebody would have to go check with them to figure out if they did have something to do with it. Right. right. The, this is only the list of who was working that particular day. That doesn't mean that they sourced this, that they had anything to do with this particular video. I understand that completely. Sure. Let's, um, can you go back to this document here? That sure. is exhibit, exhibit, five. exhibit five. Okay, so we talked about the first page really quick on, I talked about this red part here. Uh, yes. But now I want to go to page two. And so that's actually going to be on the reverse side. Sure. Okay. And we'll see here it talks about hour number one, right? Yes. Come on! Oh, God damn. Right? Yes. And then it says right there, mystery, Sandy Hook victim dies, parentheses, again, close parentheses, in Pakistan. Yes. Right? Okay, so this was a show Mr. Jones was doing, right? Uh, he was the host of the show, yes. Yeah. So Mr. Jones kept saying that Noah died again in Pakistan, even though the company knew Mr. Posner was in distress about it, right? I don't know that he said Noah died in Pakistan. I think what he was saying was, here is an article that we wrote, and here's a cut to the BBC footage, and... Noah, Noah's photo is in that footage. Well, what I what I want to get to is we had talked earlier about how that article was just Mr. Salazar, and that's not necessarily Mr. Jones endorsing this or anything. But here's yeah. Mr. Jones literally reading that same headline on He's his show. He's reading right? a headline that was that was reported by somebody else. Yes. Well, no, I mean we understand Mr. Salazar doesn't do he doesn't report or publish anything. Free speech system. Well, he is a writer for Free Speech, so yes, Free Speech I'm publishes just, it. I'm just trying to, is there any reason why you're, why the company's trying to disclaim responsibility for what Mr. Salazar wrote? No, he wrote it. Right, and the company published it. And the company published it. And then Mr. Jones came on again, right? Right? What do you mean, he came on the show? Right, Mr. Jones came on the show and published that headline again. He published the headline, yes. Sure. So Mr. Jones did that, even though he knew it would cause Mr. Posner distress. I don't know that he knew that it would cause Mr. Posner distress. Well, first of all, we know that the company sitting here now understands that that headline would have caused Mr. Posner distress. Right. right? But Mr. Jones didn't understand that? I don't know if Mr. Jones personally had any involvement in those emails that Mr. Because Mr. Jones doesn't have an email address. I'm sure you're aware of that. Or yes, he does. Well, he doesn't use email. Let's put it that way. Okay. I mean, again, Ms. I'm very concerned that you would sit here and confess to me and tell me Mr. Jones doesn't have an email address because he absolutely does. He does not use his email. Okay. So, so let's let's try to say that instead of the thing that wasn't. Really sure. Okay. So he doesn't use email. The emails that we were referring to earlier on about Mr. Posner communicating his displeasure with the coverage were not responded to by Mr. Jones. They were responded to by other people. I don't know what Mr. Again, not using an email yourself gives you a layer of irresponsibility, essentially. It gives you a layer of, like, plausible deniability. Um, so, like, you have to be told everything. And that, of course, makes everything a level of hearsay, whether or not that's uh, you know, relevant in this particular case or not, eh, that's up for more smart people to, to tell um, or talk about. But, like, it is an incredibly sus... Like, if you saw someone doing that on Among Us, you'd vent them out the airlock, not through a vent. Mr. Jones knew or didn't know about Mr. Posner's communication of displeasure at this point in time. Because you didn't read his deposition, right, where he talked about it. Right? But, assuming that, I will also say that this is not altogether uncommon where you source another article and publish the article. I don't know that necessarily this is an adoption by Mr. Jones of what the content of the article is. No, you, okay, well, actually I was about to say, well, you know it is because you watched the video, but you didn't watch the video. So. No, that was the one, that was the yeah. video I, uh, well, no, no, the, this video, let me, I'm sorry. Yes, I didn't watch this video. Okay, because Mr. Jones says in this video that either the Pakistan thing is fake or the Sandy Hook thing is fake. One of these has to be fake. Do you know he said that? I don't know. I didn't watch that video. Okay. Right. Um, you testified that Mr. Jones didn't have any involvement or have any knowledge of the communications with Mr. Posner. Did you ask him? Okay, 
this. So in terms of what knowledge Mr. Jones has about Mr. Hosmer... It's because whenever I die, uh, I guess I uh, the turn of the freaking frogs gay. Sure, and one of the interesting things about that is do you think there's any testimony in there about him and these communications? About? Mr. Jones not only being aware, but being involved in these communications. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, can I understand which depositions Mr. Jones you read? I know he's done a few, so... He's done three. Right, so I read the most recent one, which was in December, and I read the March one, but I don't think I read the March 2019 one. Okay. But I don't think I read the third one. Okay. If you look at segment two, sure. uh, down at the bottom it says it again, like... Holy shit, Fox. Um, and there's some Sandy Hook commentary. You see where it says that? Oh, right above that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. You're not able to talk to me about what that commentary was? No. Okay. It says he showed a copyright claim document. All right. It's been a long time since I've gone back to the round um, table. I think it so probably refers to Mr. Posner's attempts to get videos removed are you do you know that or is that just kind of something you're thinking might be true right now i think that that's what's true but have, have you done anything to figure that out no so that document uh, and actually can you go ahead and flip the page again for me now on the first page yeah, yeah now we're going no now we're going to the one that says 924 so it's going to be the next page you see the Bates number 924 mm. yes okay and on this page on segment four it also talks about showed copyright claim document on camera. Yes. Okay. If this is Greeting, the complaint or some sort of complaint from Mr. Posner, I need to warn a little while you haven't ago, done anything to locate it or lurking in the wing on the no, opposite side of the round what table. This to me is that and I can hear the segment, he a howling the and wailing of spirits in fear of the on curse his on his desk camera. A right. plethora exactly. of spirit can't even yeah. imagine. Not even the grafting caused anything. You should keep your distance. I know you're strong. Let's go to the next page. I can hear it howling. You should keep see your distance. See the page distance. in it, base number 925? Uh -huh. Okay. Do you see segment four? Yes. It says honor network physical address discrepancy slash donations. Do you see where it says that? Yes. What did the company mean by physical address discrepancies and donations? Um... I First of all, let me ask you, let me step back. Sure. Have you undertaken any steps to understand what the company, before, before coming to this room, what the company meant by honor network physical address discrepancies and donations? Yes, so when I spoke to Rob Dew, I did speak to Rob well, Dew to about you know that claims that were made in connection with Mr. Posner and his, um, and the video, I think, believe it's this video about the, the um, address. Um, and I think this was when we had the discussion about his U-Haul address. And, um, and I think at the time the problem was that they didn't understand that the U-Haul has P.O. boxes. And so they were wondering why the address, the official address, would be at a U-Haul. And that's really? what that's, they're talking about with the physical discrepancy. That's the discrepancy? I think that's the discrepancy. Okay. When I talked to Rob Dew, that was his... Un his understanding well you know he uh, he identified a ups store you, you remember him identifying a ups i thought store? it was a u-haul store he did that too mm -hmm. but do you remember the U? do you know anything about the ups no store? i don't obviously it's not even somebody like rob do knows that po boxes have a ups store, right? i can't testify as to what rob do knows you certainly didn't ask him did you i didn't ask him no how did they know that was where lenny was picking up his mail how did they know that was there? Um, you mean where did they get that address from? Sure. Well, when I asked Rob, do, I did ask Rob do that question, and his information was that he, when he did a search on the Honor Network, that address came up as a mailing address. Okay, so he did some research into the issue. I think he looked for the Honor Network because the Honor Network was being was engaged in getting information taken off of the YouTube page, so it led him to... Oh my god, it's the fingers. ...that particular... Okay, hold on. I want to get... Uh, I want to go over here and see what's up before I touch that, because I... 
Violence of man. That's sussy, I see. Oh, good Christ, they're open! Okay, what are we doing here? Nothing good. is this? Oh, Christ, I don't know what this is. Don't know, dumb. Have you ever felt the curse? With your whole being, the pox upon life itself, feared and despised by all, the reviled blessing. <laughs> Apparently not. You are but a lamb, a stranger to defilement, ignorant of your own ignorance. You no longer interest me. I've been long without peace. Don't spoil my quietude. I asked you to be thankful of that is all that keeps your death and default. I asked you to be thankful of the holes that is all. Interesting. Let's go talk to the fingers, I guess. with Queen Marika to become Elden Lord and restore the Golden Order. The Fingers expect as much from you as they do, young Gideon. Take this, a token of farewell. Now, go forth. Become Elden Lord. Interesting. Queen Marika, a god in, but after the Elton Rings shatter a grim punishment for shattering the order. The, the fingers speak. Marika's trespass demanded a heavy sentence. But even in shackles, she remains a god and the vision's vessel. Confer great runes to become Elden Lord and join Queen Marika as her consort. The fingers have willed it so. Now you may go. Uh, I want to look up how you, like, what do you do from gaming, like, remembrance stuff? Because I've never played. Uh, a Souls game before, so uh, let's find out.
how do you duplicate? Oh, okay, cool. So I can get a... I can get duplicates later. But I can only use the mausoleums that walk around once. Okay, cool. Now, does that mean that I get the axe and, like, 2,000 gold? Or this? I have a lot of strength. Require a lot of strength, and I don't have a lot of strength. Okay, well. Wow, that door. Huh? Okay, let's see. Yeah, this is just. Isn't wow, okay. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Okay. Just want to talk to the thingies. this greeting do you hear the spirit Have glaive, grave, glove work tools. Okay. Okay. Well, back up here we go. Organization. Those are those anti-First Amendment activities you referenced earlier. That's right? correct. When it says there next, the Honor Network Group going after the Second Amendment, what does the company mean by that? I think that the uh, opinion was that the Honor Network, in addition to this First Amendment activity, is involved in Second Amendment activity. What, what do you mean? What, okay, first of all, did you talk to Rob Dew about that? Um, I don't know if it was in my conversation with Rob Dew or with with Mr. Jones, but I think that the general understanding is that the Honor Network is engaged in that type of political speech for First Amendment speech and Second Amendment. Second Amendment. What do you do? Second Amendment's about guns, right? Yes. So your testifying here is that he's understanding. Oh, fuck it. What? Right. 
Okay, good to know. The boat is hard to catch. Certainly the company is not going to make opinions based on no knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? Well, the company's opinions and the individual host's opinions are two different things. Absolutely. And that's why I'm also asking about sourcing and research for the boat. So right. that's why I want to know Rob Dew's opinion and I want to know the company's opinion. I've, I've testified that I believe Rob Dew's opinion is that they are engaged in this type of activity. And I'm asking you, what knowledge does it, does, was ever researched? Or does the company possess about any positive that would support that claim? I don't know what Rob Dew based his opinion on. I didn't, like I said, I didn't watch this particular video. And in terms of the recent research, the sourcing or research that went into making this particular film. Well, and, and let's make it clear. He didn't just not watch the video. He did review the document. Okay. Okay. Um, aside Fair enough. And, oh, well, actually, no, that's not that's not 100% accurate because I did review this Sandy Hook victim dies again in Pakistan article. But aside from those things, I'm not aware of any other documents that exist. Okay. Can you summarize any other information the company has about Mr. Kennedy? All right, let's try that again, shall we? It has as we sit here today. Uh -huh. um, I have seen a background check that was produced in the production. Okay, tell me about that. Where did that come from? You know, interestingly enough, I cannot determine where that came from. That's um, less interesting than you might think. Okay. Um, um, no, uh, so when you say you can't determine where it came from, let's, let's, let me back up. You understood that, that background report. What did you do? We'll come back to this fight later. We've gotten there somehow. Yeah, exactly. So, so somebody had to have this year because this is when it was produced. Wait. Oh, I don't know. I can't. You don't know when it was. Produced. I don't know when it was produced, and I don't know when it came to the company. So I don't know if it was produced if it came into our attention this year. I, I don't know. Okay. Thank you. So. I know you can't talk to me about what you talked to them about. What I talked to them oh, about? Hold on, hold on. Let me get the whole question out. Sure. I, in fact, preference, we, we just talked about you talking to a couple of people, Mr. Dew and Mr. Jones, about this background. And I know you can't talk to me about the substance of conversations you've had with attorneys. But considering that attorneys were the ones who are the la last person in the chain of custody who gave it to me, have you talked to attorneys about where this came from? Um... to attorneys about where it could have come from, yes. Okay. As not any descriptions of those, dis of those discussions, but it's fair to say that after the conclusions of those discussions, you are not able to give me any information about that. That's accurate. with a 
a lawsuit that Mr. Halbig and Mr. Posner have. Okay. And somehow that came to be in our documents, whether Mr. Halbig emailed that to us or whatever. But I believe the allegation is that, at least Mr. Posner's allegation in connection with that lawsuit, that Mr. Halbig produced that background check. I believe it's 99 pages or 100 pages long. It's like a shorter background check. Sure. So I, 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 I did see both of them. Um, but the longer one, I am not sure. I can't testify to it. Um, I know you don't know where you came from, but do you know who found it in the files? I don't know. Do you know where it resided in the no. files? No, I, and that's that's the interesting part is I try to determine if it came to us in an email or if it came to us in some other fashion, and I can't find the origin. We did not produce it, like so we didn't ask for it to be produced. I think it was sent to us. I'm just not sure how. How do you know it was sent to you? Because I think that it originated with Mr. Halbert. How do you know that? Because it was in the So there are a bunch of emails that uh, Mr. Halbert Those guys are not worth the 800 runes it takes to kill them. <sighs> okay, so when you say you think it came from the litigation, that's because it was in proximity, physical proximity in the production to the documents that related to that litigation? Right. Alright, you understand with me though. You've. Damn it! The reason is because that sucks. Um, some of those emails, communications between Mr. Halbig and Mr. Posner and Mr. Halbig and Mr. Posner's attorney relating to that litigation is specifically referencing that background check. Okay, but, but all you know is that there's something went on between Posner and, and Halbig. And so you assume that that document that you have must have been that, that, there, there's nothing you've done to independently run I haven't right independently verified it, no. I, I, and I don't see the actual email. Okay. Okay. This brings me to my next point is InfoWars is really about the Maybe I shouldn't be trying to like but, um, learn a whole new weapon on these at guys. The time, I mean, pursuant to my conversations with numerous employees, his emails were not being opened. There, okay, listen. First of all, there are other places the company can get information about that lawsuit. Other than Mr. Hobbit, right? Sure, you can you can do a Google search. So on. let me ask you that: Has the company gotten information? Yeah. Wow, that was quick. Verify. I, I, I don't see anything in the production that would have indicated. I would love it if I could get like a magic spell that like gives me a shield. I didn't talk. Or like a, a, an extra bonus on that. Specific that'd be fucking wicked. litigation. My information on that litigation just comes from the production. Is 
Pillow to the corpse. Florida. Miranda found it. Lovely. Yeah, that will Okay. So yes. you did know things about that from Miss Karpova's deposition? Yes. So you know that the answers you just gave about people not giving in for any information to the company about those lawsuits, that's not right. That was discussed in Ms. Karpova's deposition. Right? What are you uh, what exhibit number are we in? This is an exhibit that I assume you read. God damn it! These fucking guys, my dudes. Like players or something, man. They're rough. Oh, gotcha. okay. I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. Okay, this is a document that was read verbatim in Ms. Karpova's deposition. Are you familiar with this document before you... What, let me, can I read it? You may. Okay. Okay, so this is a document that, contrary to your last answer, is somebody from outside the company Understand that doesn't really match the testimony, does it? Uh, I disagree. So, the company receives a lot of emails like this about not just about Calvin, but various people that we either have calling in station or various people that we're uh, reporting on or uh, commentators or you know, whatever the case may be. Um, this document is very common. This type of thing would be common, and when I asked Mr. Dew about not only this document, but maybe one or two other comments from other people about Mr. Hybrid's credentials, um, whether anything was done or conveyed to anybody else internally about it, and the answer is no. So I, I agree with you that this was forwarded to somebody, but I don't think that anybody would have necessarily followed up with it. Does that make sense? So Nico is a producer, right? Mm, producer. Uh, well, right. So I think, well, I think his more specific job description, even though there's no official job description, was that he, um, he was the person who was coordinating the Alex Jones show. Um, but yes, I, so I see that it's really So this looks like brutal. Was I don't know how I'm going to clear this uh, place. General mailbox, media contacts at Infowars. Right. But what, and what, that it was being monitored and forwarded along to Rob. Whether Rob saw it or did anything with it, I don't know. No Nico saw it. No Nico did something. Nico saw it, right. But he did something. Aside from forwarding it to Rob? Well, that's something, isn't it? Well, it forwarded it to Rob. And then told him, here are some comments on Albig's last interview. Right. Nico's not control Nico doesn't control the content of anything that's done on air. Or never did. Okay. What I'm trying to get at is this is an internal said it's not it's not telling him to look at it do you think it that's a fourth line answer it says some comments on Hal Big's last interview it's not telling him whether to do anything with it or anything like that it's I'm not saying about whether to do that okay you know that he intended him to look at it right I and I'm, I'm asking her do you think that answer was reasonable yes I do okay what is an editor 
um, your definition of editorial discussion Absolutely mine. not mine. No, yours, because you were the one who didn't object to these topics and then told the court you were going to go get prepared on them. I want to know what you say, editorial discussion. The company doesn't really adhere to the term editorial discussion, which is why I said I didn't agree with the term. So, I mean, in terms of editorial discussions as a big media company determined, For fuck's sake. What we should cover and what we shouldn't cover, or how we should cover it or how we shouldn't cover it. So that's why I don't agree with the term. So when it comes down to that topic, editorial discussions on Sandy Hook, I would take it that would have been the easiest topic for you to prepare for because there are none. Right? We don't have, that's correct, we don't have editorial discussions. There's no such thing as an editorial discussion. That's, that's what Ms. Karpova told me too, so I'm glad y'all are on the same page there, that you are going to go with that. Before this lawsuit, okay, hold on here, hold on. In terms of the company, I believe what you testified for me earlier is, is notwithstanding that email you just saw, which for instance you say there was no directions to do anything, you know, they may have followed up on it or anything. The company did not take an interest, any sort of specialized interest, or publish any information about the lawsuit involving Mr. Harvey and Mr. Carlin. Is that what you're saying? I haven't seen any information published about that particular lawsuit. Have you watched the March 4th, 2015 video with Mr. Harvey? That was in the plaintiff's petition. Let me see. What date is that? March? March 4th, 2015. And you don't know the ID number for that? No, I don't. I got a title for it, but I don't... Yeah. Do you know what the title is? Uh, new bombshell information has been found. Okay, yes. So, March 4th. I did, yes, I did uh, review that. All right, what's that bombshell information? You know what that is, right? So just for reference, the company's ID number is underscore seven I B five W K U L B Y. Okay. So let me just go to my notes. That. At some point I ran out of tabs. So. Okay, so now we're talking about the March 4th, 2015 video, the new bombshell information inbound. Yes. You know what the bombshell information is, right? Yes. That's the subpoenas in that lawsuit with Mr. Posner and Mr. Halbert, right? Just let me uh, review my notes for just one second. Sure. You a question and answer they it. they asked um, so and here's the problem the subpoena there are subpoenas that were also issued in connection with 
the FOIA mm -hmm. um, litigation, That's which right. is not the same thing as the Florida litigation. Um, and so they, I thought my understanding was talking about the FOIA. Maybe we'll pull up that video again. But I could be mistaken. Yeah, because, I mean, what happens in that video, I'll just tell you, he says, he asks where the bombshell information is, and he says about the subpoenas, mm -hmm. and he's talking about Mr. Foss was also, and then he says, and also, I got this other stuff going on up with the FOIA stuff. Right. So that's really interesting. Right. They, we, did, uh, we did discuss on many occasions, uh, in multiple videos, the FOIA litigation. I think it was over, like, three hearing dates. Right. But what I'm asking is the bombshell information here is that he had served a subpoena to Mr. Foss. So I don't recall, in my notes, just based on my notes, I didn't write down the name, and I don't know if the name of the case was ever specified, but like I said, there was a lot of litigation, and that's what they were talking about was the subject of it was that subpoenas had been issued. All right. Did you but I'm not sure which case is my point. For these notes that you're taking about these things Mr. Halbig was talking about that yes. Infowars was putting on the air, did you talk to Mr. Halbig about them? No, I have never spoken to Mr. Halbig. Did you try? No. Why was the company interested in the legal action between Bosner and Malvin? Why? Mm -hmm. um, I think during this time period, it was in the coverage of, it was, these, this time period simultaneously was the time period that the FOIA hearings were happening or going to happen. Um, and what usually do as far as what is in the news cycle we talk about the news cycle. So this would have been something that was in the news cycle. Mr. Posner's lawsuit was in the news cycle? I don't know. Alright, that's oh, I'm not asking you about the FOIA stuff. I get why they were interested in the FOIA the stuff. The FOIA stuff was in the news cycle. Right, I get well, yeah, I mean I'm not sure. When you say news cycle, what is that? The FOIA stuff is in the news cycle. So um, when I say news cycle, and that's a good question, so um, news cycle means that um, they source every day from a variety of different places. Um, and so every day they will kind of scan, you know, for example, uh, Twitter, what is trending. Um, they'll, so they'll source various news sites. Um, they'll source social media as to what's trending on social media. Um, and then they'll decide what is trending in the news cycle who that was, way. Who was in the news cycle? Who was covering FOIA besides InfoWars? Dan Vedante. You mean another news source? Yeah, like how did it get in the news cycle? I don't know which source are you, are you referring to. Are you referring to like a, a news media source or one of the sources that they are sourcing for their news? No, I mean, you say they were discussing it because of FOIA, because it was in the news cycle. Right, it was relevant at the time because it was something that they had seen in the news cycle. Where I don't did they see it? All right, because they I, don't mention it. There's no reporters at that FOIA hearing except for Dan Bernard. But that doesn't mean it's not in the news cycle. That doesn't mean that there's not internet chatter about it, and that was a source of what they found to be trending. So just because there wasn't a news article that was trending on the internet or trending on social media or something that was interesting. These monsters are so fucking cool. They sent a reporter up there, how they went up there, we, we know all that. What I'm interested in is why is it happening? Um, so, at this point in time, um, Mr. Jones references 
specifically the copyright claims that were going on in the YouTube for YouTube. Um, so it was interested in the actions that Mr. Posner was taking. He specifically references the copyright claims in that video. Um, and so that particular aspect of it, I think, would have made Mr. Jones continue to be interested in it. Okay. So we can agree that the company was to some extent following that lawsuit. Um, sure, to the extent that Mr. Halbig came on and talked about the subpoenas that were being issued. And to the extent that Rico was sending information to Rob Dew about the lawsuit. I don't know that Rob had ever read it, but I, I, I see it, but it is in the company's email, so yes. Right, and I mean, Rico certainly so, uh, didn't know that. It appears so. And was interested enough into it to turn it on over to the Nightly News Director. Oh, right? well, some I don't know what his policies and practices are regarding stuff. forwarding information. I don't know if he just forwards everything regarding a particular guest. He knew that Rob would have been interested in that particular guest and so forwarded right, it. So I don't know what his policy is. And you didn't ask to find out what that policy was, right? I didn't That's ask not. him that, no. Um, now, before this lawsuit was filed, the company knew that Mr. Posner was being harassed by Mr. Halbig, right? I'm sorry, repeat the question? Yeah, before this lawsuit was filed, the company knew that Mr. Posner was being harassed by Mr. Halbig? I don't, I don't know that, no. I think we talked about earlier, I don't know at what point anybody became aware of what he was doing just because they stopped reading his emails. Because he's kind of crazy, right? I think that his email communications got more and more bizarre as time got on, went on. And wait, so wait. I think that was the word that Nico used, was Hold bizarre. On. You, you've read a lot of Wolfgang Halbig emails, I'm taking it? I did, yes. So you've read emails from him like in 2014, and you've probably read emails from him up in 2017. I've read a lot of emails. Are you going to tell me that the emails he sent in 2014 are any less crazy than the emails he sent in 2017? I think they've gotten crazier. Okay. But we can both agree that he, there are plenty of emails he sent in 2014 that the company did in fact read and thanked him for sure. that, are, that are crazy. Um, yes. And you understand InfoWars, of course, you, what, you, you, know, you may not know if you're even aware of them, but they produced emails where Mr. Posner was being harassed by Mr. Halbig. We have produced those type, those types of emails, yes. Okay, but you sitting here today don't even know if the company even knew about them, right? At the time, no, I don't know. Okay. We know about them now, obviously. Sure, sure. When did you find out? Find out what? When did the company find out that Mr. Halbig was harassing Mr. Posner? Oh Christ! I'm not sure if they Great. Scarlet Rock, emails really? as, as a result of this lawsuit going back. But as I said, he stopped coming Jesus on. Jesus fucking air. Christ! It was a discreet period of time, and then he wasn't on the air anymore. And then there weren't any real communications with him. Two great rooms, though. Wow. All right. Um, does the company contend Mr. Posner is a gun regulation advocate? Okay. Did we, did we talk about this? Um, we haven't talked about Mr. Posner yet. Mm -hmm. Mr. Posner individually or in his connection with the Honor Network? Or both? <laughs> Let's do both, sure. Um, I think that that would be an accurate description. Um, I think the company does make a claim that he is a advocate um, in connection with the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. Okay. Do you, does the company have any facts, any evidence, any knowledge whatsoever that Mr. Posner has ever said a word publicly, ever, about guns? I don't know the answer to that, but also there is, um, I mean, I know that they're divorced, but his ex-wife has made some comments and political activism regarding gun control. Come on, you know that's not relevant to my question. You I have know to know not. that. I mean, I, I look, I know you're not an uneducated witness. You're a lawyer. You're an attorney. 
And when I sit here and, and I ask you, does the company have any, any evidence that Mr. Posner has ever said any information about guns, and you start speculating about what his ex-wife said? I'm not speculating. That, I've reviewed documents about that. But or I understand let's put your it this question. Way. No, and I don't think you do, because what I'm asking you is you start giving me information speculating about what Mrs. Posner's statements at some point in her life reflect on what Mr. Posner may or may not be in terms of a gun regulation attitude. You know that's not relevant. I don't think that it's not relevant, but I think that in connection with Sandy Hook and the Second Amendment, honor in spe it specifically, um, I don't have any information as I sit here today about Second Amendment. First Amendment, yes. Yeah, Second Amendment, I don't have any information as I sit here. Well, we just talked about, you had told me that the company had reason to say in the February 12, 2015 video that Honor was engaged in anti-Second Amendment activities. You remember us talking about that? That's not what I said. What I said was Mr. Dew had an opinion about that, that he aired, and that was his opinion. All right, so here's what I'm trying to get at. What facts inform that opinion? And as we talked about earlier, I told you I didn't know that. Okay, but the problem is, is that I believe that you testified that the company just now does interpret it in a way that Mr. Posner is a Second Amendment. Um, Does it or doesn't? I mean, that's what I'm trying to get at. Like I said, I don't, I can't point to any specific material as I said here today regarding the, the gun control aspect of it. Okay. Has your husband ever said anything you don't agree with? My husband? Sure. Yeah. Do you think you should be, do you think you should be held to have participated in everything that your husband said? No. You know what information the company has on Veronique De La Rosa? Um, as far as Ms. De La Rosa goes, um, I am aware of the comments that she made in connection with gun control, um, in connection with her son's funeral, and the governor, I believe, um, attending the funeral. Um, I believe there might also, there was also an interview, and aside from that, I, I don't think I'm aware of anything else. How did you, what did you do to find out what the company knows about this Uh, as we discussed earlier, I did do a search in the documents that were produced. Um, I did talk to Mr. Jones about Miss De La Rosa. Um... Do you, I, so when you search, you just search for Veronique De La Rosa? Yes, or, or Posner. I don't know what name it would be under, because I wasn't sure when their divorce happened, so... I'm going to correct you once again, that's Posner. Oh, I'm sorry, Posner, yes. Yeah, I, Posner. So I, um, like I said, I didn't know when their divorce happened, so I didn't know which name she was using. Okay, and did you find any documents? Aside from the documents that we listed, um... What do you mean the documents you listed? I mean, the information in connection with her statements at the funeral you and saw gun some control. Documents about that? Uh, I, I want to say I saw an article about it, um, and then the interview. What, what are you talking about? She did, did an interview? Was that the interview with Libby Anderson Cooper? She's done an interview with Anderson Cooper. That's the only interview. You that saw I've that? Seen. Yes. Okay, where'd you get that video? Uh, I believe that was the video that we had posted and was referenced numerous times by Mr. Jones on the show. No, no, I understand Mr. Jones many, many times yes. has posted a video of the last five seconds of that interview with right. no sound where Mr. Anderson Cooper's head is turning his nose disappears, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But there's nothing, Miss Delarose isn't talking in those, right? No, no, it was mostly just, um shots of Anderson Cooper. Right, so how'd right. you see the interview? I don't think I watched the entire interview. I think that's the entirety of my knowledge is just what was posted about that interview. There's, I don't understand, Ms. Paz. There's nothing about guns. Or, I mean, Ms. Douglas isn't talking, so how do you understand what she said? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. When, in, when Ms. De La Rosa is featured on InfoWars right. and all these videos right. of Anderson Cooper's nose disappearing, right. she's not talking. Right, but, so the topic, but that said. topic of that conversation it was related to Anderson Cooper's coverage of the shooting. Sure. Oh, right. So how do you know she was talking about guns? Um, I think that that was what was represented as the topic of that interview. Represented by who? By the media. 
I think that's the reason why it was covered. Look, I know Valkyrie's promises. You don't have any personal knowledge. You, you don't. You, you you had nothing to do with this thing until two weeks ago. So when you come in here and tell me that and that Miss De La Rosa was talking about guns in an interview, where did you get that? As I said, I think that was the topic of the conversation of the interview. I, I know you're saying that. Yes. Where did you answer. Where did you get that piece of information? From the videos that I watched. All right. So what video does that come from? I don't understand. It comes like from the videos said, that were produced it. by Infowars. Okay. So at what, what what point was it ever? Did you see Miss Delarosa ever talking about guns? Did I personally watch the entirety of that video, that interview? I, that's not what I'm asking, actually, because now you're telling me that you got this information not from the interview itself, which I believe you told me you watched, and then actually we just saw the. No, itself. I watched the video of Anderson Cooper. That's right. what I watched. Right. So now you're telling me that somehow you got it from the Infowars videos that Miss De La Rosa was talking about guns. Where did you get No, that? what I said was that the reason that interview was covered was because the topic of it oh, from Anderson that? Cooper's perspective was guns. Who said that? Who said that the topic of Anderson Cooper's I don't know, that's what I understood that the topic was. I, I, I don't, I'm not asking you what you understood, I'm wondering how did you arrive at that understanding? And I testified, my basis for my conclusion was watching the videos that okay. InfoWars posted. The InfoWars videos. All right, yes. so let's talk about those videos. You're sure, watching. which What videos? part of those videos, any of those videos, anything from any of those videos, who said or what part of it did you glean from that that interview was about guns? That was the reason why that was being covered. I don't, you, you've got to understand there's a disconnect here. So... Again, she is deliberately being obfuscatory. She is trying to misdirect the conversation around how she knows that, because she knows that if she admits the way, the way that she learned that, it can show bias. And that bias can be used against her again, to color her entire testimony in court. So when you see somebody in a deposition weaseling their way around like this it's because they're trying to like ignore the fact they're trying not to enter a fact into record that they know something from like an outside source outside of what they were told to do uh by the court um which is why she was brought in in the first place because she's not supposed to do that but of course because alex jones is an idiot and everything that they do is stupid She's fucking up. Okay, back with this one. I, 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 I don't heard, understand this. I 100% understand. understand your testimony that you believe, based on some information you saw, that that topic of that interview was about guns. I understand that completely, 100%. That for some reason or another, an interview that you knew nothing about two weeks ago, you now believe has something to do with guns. And I'm trying to figure out what, in, and I know you say that because it came from the videos, and I'm trying to figure out what in those videos at any point led you to the conclusion that Ms. De La Rosa was talking about guns. And again, I'm going to testify, and I understand you don't understand my answer, and I can't help you understand it, other than to say that I watched the videos, that it appears that the purpose and reason why Mr. Jones wanted to cover it was because that interview was based on that topic. But again, did Mr. Is, is this something you're getting from something Mr. Jones said? Something Miss De La Rosa said? Something another person said? I don't, I don't understand where this is coming from. That you just say I watched these videos and now I understand the purpose of that interview was about that. Do you know? Do you know what person that comes from? Do I know what? Person it comes from? Yeah, why you believe that. In other words, the, the information, who it came oh. from, that that's why you believe that. Like I said, it would have been in the videos. So if this particular video was being posted by Mr. Jones, he thought that that video was relevant for that purpose, so it probably came from Mr. Jones. Okay, wait, how do you know what Mr. Jones thought? Is this something you got from the interview with him or something you saw in the video? No, I'm just, uh. like I said, the totality of my knowledge is based on the video. Okay, and so that video itself, you do you remember any specific things Mr. Jones said in that video about guns? Which which video? Because he talks about that I interview a number of times. I don't know. You're telling me that yeah, that's where you came from. Right? Well, so he talks about the well, most of the subsequent information that he talks about is just about Anderson Cooper and the nose disappearing. 
but um, as far as the first time that he references that video, mostly what he talks about is, is the nose disappearing, but I think the reason, like I said, the topic of it, that's the reason why he called it. Do you, do you recall any InfoWars videos that you've watched during this litigation? Sure. In which you have seen Anderson Cooper talking about guns? No, just because I think that the videos that they posted didn't have any sound. The purpose of showing the video and the argument that was made of the video was that his nose was disappearing and Alex's opinion that it was green screened or blue screened, I can't remember which. But no, okay. that, I don't think that that Anderson Cooper had any audio. <clears throat> or my client, right? You've never heard, you've never heard Veronique Delarosa speak, I would take it. No, I, I've never heard her speak. Okay. Now, Mr. Jones's position about what that interview was for, mm -hmm. being gun related. Is that, a, is that a factual claim or is that an editorial opinion? What do you think that is? You mean, is it Mr. Jones's opinion? Or what? It's tough because I don't really know what you're drawing this from still. So I'm, I'm going to say, whatever information it is that you're drawing that Free Speech Systems put in a video that makes you think that that interview is about guns, is that a fact or an editorial opinion? Well, so I don't know that I would necessarily term it as an editorial opinion, but I think that broadly speaking, the company's coverage of Sandy Hook was sur uh, surrounding gun control and how in the aftermath of the tragedy, there was a push for gun control. So that underlying coverage Based on what the company knows, okay, again, talking about what it knows, but well, first of all, before we move on from Verity, I just want to make sure, and I'm, I may have gotten confused, in terms of documents that you have reviewed relating to Verity and Delarosa, that's pretty much limited to the InfoWars videos. Based on what the company knows, based on its knowledge of the plaintiffs, uh, does the company have any reason to contend that any of these parents have been found? Um, no, I think there is a distinction between distress related to the shooting and distress related to the coverage, um, which should be included. Um, but also, I think there's a probably should be made between InfoWars airing other people's coverage and then the original source of the coverage. Are you saying that as a matter of the company's personal opinion or just the company's legal opinion? Or does I think it's a legal opinion as to much of the sourcing. I object to the extent that you're getting into any conversations you think any of the attorneys for Mr. Jones, InfoWars, Free Speech Systems, and That's tomorrow, I think. Um, the original, the original sourcing of the. But they are defendants in this lawsuit for which she's here today. Yeah, but if she had conversations with an attorney about Kit Daniels or anything that related to attorney-client privilege, that would be equally privileged in this case. And you know that. Come on. Now. Is that is that basically the, the sourcing? The original sourcing. So that sidebar conversation they just had essentially boils down to uh, you can't talk about this because it's it's something that you uh, talked with your attorney about and uh, this is uh, uh, not relevant to evidentiary, like evidence gathering. Um, dot, 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 the counter argument to that, that, the, that the, the plaintiff's lawyer, the, the guy who's giving the deposition uh, brought up. Basically said that um, uh, 
the privilege here is non confident like the confidentiality doesn't apply because of how open all of this stuff has been regarding that particular thing. Now, that objection, so you, you'll hear people say objection in, like, depositions constantly, and that's because the person saying an objection is trying to log in the court to make the next bit of testimony that the witness gives uh, irrelevant to the case because it was asked in some way that was unethical or unjustifiable or manipulative in some way. Now, I have a strong... I have a strong feeling that they are not being... Uh, uh, that that objection would be overruled in court and this testimony would be allowed to be heard. So, uh, one of the things a judge will do when they're talking to or about uh, this sort of thing is they will go through and they'll, like, mark through the whole thing. Like, when this is played in court and an object objection comes up, the judge could say sustained or overruled or whatever, and then, like, would give the jury instruction on how to process the information they are given. Uh, weird eccentricities of law. Thing of the materials, so, like, for example, free speech system's position is that it is a... It is a blogger, it is a punditry, it's commentary. We're not doing independent resource resourcing or research, uh, and we're not really engaged 99% of the time in journalism. So the original sourcing of these materials is another person, is a third party person. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. So I guess the question is, to what extent those people are responsible for their their opinions unassociated with gotcha. free speech? So if Wolfgang Halbig's on air, it's come to this position that maybe it doesn't have any responsibility for what Wolfgang Halbig says. That's correct. We'll see how that goes. Based on what the company knows, does the company have any reason to dispute that these parents' grieving yeah, process of, 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 of their children? has been impacted by InfoWars' actions as it regards Sandy Hook. I think it's subject to the same answer for my last question. But, I mean, and in other words, that's what I'm trying to kind of follow up on here, is I understand you think there may be the distinctions that need to be made about grief that was caused directly by the shooting itself and maybe things that were said afterwards, right? And that there may also need to be distinctions about who said it. Maybe it was third parties, maybe it was InfoWars. And I get that those distinctions exist, but notwithstanding those distinctions and whatever slices need to be cut out of this pie you will agree with me that these parents pro grieving process has been affected by what infowars did about sandy hook by what infowars did by what other people who are posting on the internet did uh, by you know any other third party any other news media coverage yes i'm sure it has okay. not just infowars not just infowars that's correct okay can you tell me another major major media organization who has covered Sandy Hook from the same perspective as InfoWars, i.e. saying that my parent, my clients are fake. Do you know anybody else who's done that? Um, other news media organizations have covered it. Um, I don't know necessarily from the same perspective. Well, I mean, you're saying that there's other people who are responsible. There are other people's opinions that have been talked and discussed. But I just saw an article yesterday that is still claiming that Sandy Hook didn't happen. And this article was not amplified in any way by InfoWars. So these people are still out there. And you can Google search it, and it will still come up on a Google no, search. You're aware enough to, to realize that if somebody was writing about Sandy Hook being fake today, there is a substantial likelihood that they were influenced by InfoWars coverage. That's a possibility, right? It's also a possibility they're doing their own independent research. 100%. It also is a possibility they're basing their opinions on how they. So it's also of an opinion based on somebody else. I don't know where their information is coming from. And if they based it on how big, there's a substantial possibility they know about how big because of him being brought to public consciousness through Infowars. That's a possibility, right? I don't know how it's being brought to their consciousness. Exactly. So what I want to I want to get to is, can you name me everybody else who's like? I mean, I think you under you you you've acknowledged that some of the impact on the grieving process of my parents <coughs> came from InfoWars. Can you tell me everybody else who needs to be blamed? Whoever is doing their own individual reporting on the, on the issue. So, like, for example, like I said, I saw an article that was written yesterday. Mm -hmm. Much of the opinions that were written, written in that article, it was like 150 pages long, had nothing to do with anything InfoWars had ever talked about. So it's so they're doing their own independent. I don't I don't want to call it research, but you know their opinions are based on things.
things that are not connect connected in any way to this. Okay, do you, can you produce that for me? Do you have that article you saw? Sure. Okay. I just want to make sure it's, it's makes... a thing that you could find again if you needed to. Sure. Okay. And and y your representation is, is you read all 150 pages of that. And none of I did not read all. I scanned it. So like so for example, some of it was um, in there was based Boy, on it's that boat a fight lawsuit again. Mr. Posner filed against Mr. Fetzer and. I wonder if I can just speed past this. Michigan. I avoid two boss fights in a row. For defamation, I don't believe we've ever covered that defamation suit. In Way. Um, she also cites to some other photographs that I don't think we ever covered. So these are those are things that really are not being advised by us. We're right, getting it you, in other places. When you say Infowars, you do not believe has covered the Fetzer versus Posner defamation suit. The one that was under his content, I don't know that we've covered it in any substantive way. Like I said, Fetzer really I wasn't. Make, I want to make that distinction. Sure. You don't know. Right. I've not seen any material that sh that shows that. If you want to I, show me it, I'd be sure. happy to look. Right, and, and that's what I, I, I don't need to show it to you. Sure. Because I, I don't want to get into that. What I want to make sure I understand is that you don't know if InfoWars is covered. I don't believe it's been covered. I've not seen any information to that effect. Okay. And, and I want to make sure from this last question we talked about on the grieving process, because I know you're making a distinction that other people may be responsible to, the company does not dispute that it bears some responsibility for the impact that it had on the grieving process of these families. I don't know that I would necessarily agree with that. Okay, but we, you did agree that InfoWars, its coverage, did impact that grieving process. You just don't think they have any responsibility for it, right? That's correct. If, over the course of years, InfoWars is telling the world that Sandy Hook is fake and that controversy stays alive, does the company understand that it might be hard for my clients to have closure on the death of their children? I don't think that, and I, maybe we need to talk about what fake means. So when you said may, fake, is that, does that mean children didn't die? Does yeah, that mean it is a fake flat? Does the, what is, what is no, fake No, I, I get what you're saying, I do. And let's just go ahead and make sure we both are on the same page. Sure. I, I don't think we do need to split a lot of hairs about what fake is or is not. And would you agree with me that the reason that we don't need to do that is because many, many times, people on InfoWars, including Mr. Jones, have unequivocally said that Sandy Hook is completely fake, totally synthetic, manufactured. You agree with that? I agree those are direct quotes on Mr. Jones's opinions, yes. Okay. So, let's go back to the question, because but now we can both, we both understand and we both agree that many, many times it was said on InfoWars that Sandy Hook was totally fake. And if that's a true thing, if that's the reality, that that was said many, many times, the company can understand that if that keeps the controversy alive, my clients might have a hard time having closure on the death of their children, right? And here's the problem that I'm having is I think that the distinction is important because I think there is a big difference between saying something is synthetic in the sense that it could be a false flag, a government operation, is not the same thing as saying your children did not die. Uh, Very, okay, let's make it really clear. Then. Let's make sure we're really on it. Because we talked about, yes, they did say it was totally fake, totally manufactured, right? But that may mean according to you, that kids could have died or they may have not died. He right? said that numerous times. Right, but we both know that numerous times he said kids did not die. We know that, right? Mm, I don't think that I agree with that statement. I think numerous times he's questioned some anomalies that, or what he viewed as anomalies. Numerous times he did say, I think kids died. Maybe on one or two occasions, he's like, oh, maybe I'm not sure if, it, if they did or didn't die, I'm not sure. I can't make a decision either way, but I think that upon review of the videos, I think that Mr. Jones, his opinion was that on the whole, children died. Okay. All right. Well, prob probably what we're going to need to do after the break, because I didn't plan I'd be showing you videos today.
but I did not think that there would be any resistance to the idea of Mr. Jones saying, yep, I used to think kids died, but nope, they sure didn't. I didn't think there'd be resistance to that idea. So we may need to watch some videos on it. Like I said, I think but, there is one video clip, and I think it's in, I might want to say, I can review my notes. There's we'll one it, video we'll clip where he does say that direct quote, but there's numerous other quotes where he says, I believe kids died, oh, and, I, or, and or I'm not sure whether kids died, but something smells funny, or look at this issue, or look at that issue. Do so you? I think there is one video clip where he says that, but on the whole, numerous other times, that is not what the coverage was. He said in other videos, there are pictures of kids, they said, that died that are still alive, right? Can you point me to the video? I will. We'll get there. I'm just wondering if you know it right now. Off the top of my head, no. Okay. Oh, hey, look, it's that guy it's with the ham. Do you need the lunch? Yeah, that would be nice. Okay. 12, 12.34 all. One of the things we talked about right before you left, you know, I saw an article recently oh. saying this article was fake, you remember that? Yes. Okay. And you told me that um, you wanted to make sure it was clear that InfoWars didn't amplify that article. Yes. Okay. But InfoWars, by that answer, I take it you understand, InfoWars Info does amplify things said by other people about Sandy Hook. Amongst other things, but yes. Okay. And that's a choice InfoWars makes of who to amplify and who not to amplify, correct? Yes. Have you ever been in a deposition before? You mean have I taken one or have I given one? Ever been in a room where a deposition was happening? Yes. Okay. Um, are those, did you, have you taken criminal law depositions or been present for civil law depositions? There's no such thing as a criminal deposition, but yes, I've been in civil depositions. We have them here in Texas, actually. Oh, we don't have any in Texas. not allowed to take criminal law depositions. Okay, have you ever been in deposition representing somebody in a civil law deposition? Yes. Okay. So you've done some civil work, I take it? Yes. Okay, how long have you practiced? This is my 10th year. Okay. Oh, interesting. Been Earlier, so at the very beginning, she said she had no civil law experience. No. I assume that you have a written agreement for your work in this case? Uh, you know what? I don't think I ever actually got a written agreement. I don't think I signed an agreement. Okay, do you have an invoice? That I sent to the company? Mm hmm uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. So, in other words, the amount of money you were paid was documented at some point? Yes, through my internal documenting system. I use Clio. Okay. Now, you understand there's a protective order in this case? Yes. And I haven't seen a uh, signed protective order in all of Have you done that? I've not been provided one, but I'm happy to do it. Okay. But, in other words, before being exposed to my client's confidential information, you didn't sign it. No, I didn't sign it. So his fire goes out. That's good. I know. Oh, no, I must have noticed it. Nope. Okay, so the first thing I want to put on the record is that you have given me this notebook, right? Yes. Um, I have marked it as Exhibit 8. You see that right yes. there? Yes. Okay. From what I'm able to tell, this notebook contains a couple of things. And one of the things it seems to contain is a chart of videos that you've reviewed, right? Yes. And some notes you've taken on that? Yes. There also seem to be some notes you've taken on interviews and depositions and various things like that? Yes. And then there seem to be a lot of tabbed pages um, with um, Bates numbers codes on them for videos, right? Right. That's generally my expanded notes on the videos. Okay. So the first chart you're referencing is like my reference chart and then the spreadsheet with the tabs that you're referencing. Those are my more in-depth notes. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Videos. Did you make this? Yes. Okay. Also, fun software effect. Clio is like a it's like a browser-based law thing that keeps track of your time that you work on client stuff. It's it's kind of like a clock in, clock out system, but for hourly casework. It's a pretty good management system. I found it fine during my time practicing uh, as a paralegal.
no big no big worries with it no big uh happiness with it it was just a program i'm gonna oh, you need to see that yeah Oh, good point, man. Hmm, that's strange. Okay. Let me just get that out of the way right, actually, because we're going to start talking about some videos. Um, do you see a video on here that starts with Professor Claims? <clears throat> yes. Okay, and then I see you've taken some notes over to the side, right? Yes, but like I said, this is just my basic bullet point clip of what that video is about, and then I have more in-depth notes later on. Okay, and so one of the notes that you've taken on that video, uh, first, can you tell me the date on that video? Uh, 1-10-2013. Okay, and then you have some notes in there about Helen Troyer? Mm, yeah. Can you, can you tell me what that means? Um, it might have been Owen was either in that video or did the interview. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. or something to that effect. Out this. Or maybe had, was the source for the information or something? No, Some I don't involved? think it would have been the source. It would have been the person who was doing the video. Okay. But um, I could be mistaken on that. Can I check my more in-depth notes? Yeah, well, I'm not. On that video, it's... Let's see. Distance, so yeah, so for that out. video, I have the reporter as Owen Schroyer. Okay. And um, his source was Jamie Tracy and his his website. And okay. Various other sources. I have I'm a little concerned about that answer. Okay. Because Owen Schroyer didn't start working at the divorce till 2016. Okay. Did you know that? Uh I did. So you know what might might be a typo on my part. Okay. I reviewed that video pretty early on, so I might have gotten his him mixed up with somebody else. But you see, I, where I have it's reporter, mm -hmm. and that's where I would have put in, put the name of whoever was hosting that particular uh, video. So it, it probably is just a typo on my part, or a mistake. Yeah, it's not accurate. Though. No, you're right. it's not accurate. Okay, so just from off the bat, we can say. We know at least some of the information in this chart is not accurate. Well, I made this chart. It's a hundred pages long in the last two weeks. So. Yeah, I mean, I look. <laughs> I agree with you. So I did my one, best, and there might be some typos in there, and there might be some uh, some errors. Yes, I, it might be. Let me just make sure we're clear going forward. Sure. Because I, I I understand the situation, and let me make sure I make it very clear to you as me that I one thousand percent agree with you that asking one person to create all of this is pretty unreasonable. I agree with that, okay? Um, but what I'm asking you is, because you were just the one person who had to somehow assimilate all of this information, there's gonna be mistakes. Oh, of course. Okay. Now let's talk about, um, let me give you a statement on here. This is gonna be nice. Oh, oh, this goes in your binder in there. Ah, oh, Christ, I'm a lucky cracker. Why didn't you roll? This will be exhibit nine. Okay. I've handed you exhibit nine, which is a file stamp copy of Neil Heslin's uh, original petition in his intentional infliction of emotional distress case. That's something you've reviewed, right? Yes. Okay. I've seen this. Or actually, no, go ahead. You can hang on to that. Okay, can you go to paragraph 61 for me? Okay. So what we're going to do is work backwards in time from, from recent videos to older videos, okay? And part of the reason we're going to do that is because there's going to be some things that we talk about in these recent videos that are also talked about in the old videos, but in other words, once we cover a topic, we won't have to repeat it for the later videos. Okay, so that's why I'm doing it in that direction, because I'm going backwards. So, okay. for instance, there may be things I ask you about in this video that are also talked about in this video, but hopefully if we can get the source first here, we won't have to repeat them again. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I think you'll agree with me that some of the factual assertions made about Sandy Hook have been made repeatedly in several videos, right? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about this, and you see there in paragraph 61, it talks about an October 26, 2017 video. 
that was entitled JFK Assassination Documents to Drop Tonight. Do you see where it says that? Okay, have you watched that? Um, if I may check my notes. Mm -hmm. Source, but the main topic of this particular video is JFK and documents that were released in a, in a declassification by the government, I believe. How do you know that? How do you Just know that that's the title? Title. Okay, so you know that's the title. You don't know that's the main There we topic. go. There we go. I actually fucking tried to do something. Um, I know they did covering of these particular documents. The JFK documents. What's the strength you know needed on that big ass boy? Just by being familiar 45. with some of the things that the company has talked about in the past. From interviews, you mean? From interviews, from looking at the website, from reviewing the materials that I've read. I, I just haven't watched this particular video. Okay, so you've gone to the website and seen things about JFK on the website? Not about JFK, just things that they've covered in the past. Like the documents that we've reviewed that we've also that we've talked about that we've reviewed no i'm trying to understand how you know the main topic of this video i is just, it, is it I just answered that no right i, I know the but... title of the video okay that's what i want to know is it, it's from the title you're assuming that the title describes i mean and again we, this is generally how titles work i think you'd agree right. right okay so something that he is doing here is really really smart um is he is making sure that he establishes where her knowledge comes from so that when he tears that knowledge down in court later, you have, as the jury, 100% proof that she only knows X because of Y. And when you can show that Y was wrong, you can show that her understanding of Y and the reason she gives of X is wrong. If that makes sense. That that's like a main idea or a main thesis? Yes. But sometimes things don't always follow intuitively at InfoWars. You'd, you'd agree with that? That titles don't always necessarily reflect. Sure. I mean, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Generally, you know, Alex comes on the air and I don't think he even really knows what he wants to talk about. He'll have a general idea of what he wants to talk about. And then he'll go into a tangent on something else and then maybe for one or two minutes talk about a completely unrelated topic and then switch back to the general topic. So when I say that the general topic of this particular video is JFK assassination documents to drop tonight, that's the general topic. And he may have talked about other things mm -hmm. unrelated to that topic in the video as a tangent and then recircled back. But as I said, the general topic. Okay, so is the reason you didn't watch this video is because it had a different general topic and you didn't think it was really about what we were talking about today? I did not see that particular video on the Dropbox. I reviewed all the videos that were on the Dropbox. Let's talk about this Dropbox. Is this yeah. something the company maintains? Um, so I think we talked about a little bit how there's been some issues with production versus here, production in Connecticut, there's a bunch of cases, so um, we've had a lot of trouble figuring out what has been disclosed in the various cases, and we've been trying to maintain a general, um, you know, one source of information. It's in the process of being reorganized, so if it wasn't on the Dropbox, I couldn't find it. Okay. Um, do you know if the company has this video? That I don't know either, because I know that some of the videos that are alleged in this petition were produced by the plaintiffs, and because we didn't have them. So I don't know if we have this video. What did you do to try to find out? About this particular video? Uh -huh. I did not ask anybody about this particular video. Okay. Um, you read Ms. Karpova's deposition, right? Yes. She watched this video. You know that, right? 
um, in preparation for the deposition? Absolutely. Well, I wouldn't necessarily describe it as preparation. I would describe it as she got kind of caught having not watched anything and then during the break attempted to prepare herself. I but think yes. that was my recollection, too. I don't think she watched the entire video. I think she watched clips of the video on a break. I think she skimmed through it, yeah. Right. I think because that's see, what her testimony I was. think with Ms. Karpova, her being a producer, she's uh, familiar enough with the standard format of the show that she can kind of skim through and know where topics start and stop. And so I think she was able to skim through it. Um, you, you, you I don't know if, that. if that's the case. I think that that's the point of them making those those notes was to know where things were in particular productions just because they were having problems with that. Like what segment was what they were talking about and what segment. That's the reason why they were producing those, those logs. So I don't know if she can uh, tell. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if she can tell just by looking at a video where certain statements would appear in a video unless she had reviewed the logs. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Um, so in terms of whatever claims are made in this video about Sandy Hook that the plaintiffs are talking about, or just any claims about Sandy Hook, those aren't going to be things you can talk to me about today, right? Um. I can I can talk to you about um, about some specific allegations, like for example, um, this claim that they bulldozed the house mm -hmm. and got rid of it. That's not only a, that's not a claim that was just made in that video. Um, sure. I'm sure that it was made in other videos. Mm -hmm. So I've watched other videos that have contained this particular claim of the house being bulldozed. Okay. Would you like to talk about that? Yeah. Where does that come from? This house being bulldozed. Sure. Um, you mean where did Alex Jones get the belief that the house was bulldozed? Right. Uh, I believe that there were property records that had indicated that the house was bulldozed. Have you seen those? I have not seen the have documents, you, no. Have you tried to locate them? No. Okay. I don't um, think they were amongst the documents that the company has. All right, do you understand the story that was, that this, okay, so this video covers a story by Leanne McAdoo. Do you understand that story? Sure. Okay. You know who Leanne McAdoo is? Yes. Okay. She's somebody whose work is featured in this video. Yes. Okay. Did you talk to her? No, I didn't. Did you try to talk to her? No, I didn't try to talk to her. Okay. Do you know what employees researched or vetted the information that was being produced in that video? Well, hold on. I, let me let me make sure. Sure. Because that's a bad question because we both can agree you don't really know all the vid information that was in that video, right? In this video, no. But, you know, like I said, just from the title, it's not really clear that that was the main focus of that video. I'm, I'm, I'm 100 percent sure that there was no main focus of that video because like you say, the, the idea of Alex Jones having a cohesive main topic is sort of silly. It doesn't, that's not what he does. That's simply not the protocol or format of what he does on air. Right. But we know for 100 percent sure that Sandy Hook was discussed in this video. Oh yeah, I'm sure he discussed it and I'm sure, I'm, I mean, I'm not disputing that these statements were made in that particular video. They were also made other places too. And you would think that plaintiffs have a right to ask about that. And sure. That happened, right? But you sitting here today don't know all the claims about Sandy Hook in that video. In this particular video, no, but like I said, these statements were made in other videos. Not, okay, hold on. I want to make sure, because I know what was said in that video. Okay. I know very what was said in the video. Okay. And there are many things said in that video that were never said. And so when you say that all the claims in that video were made in other videos, you can't verify that, can you? No, that's not accurate. So, okay. um, for example, this claim, phony as a $3 bill, mm -hmm. just looking at my notes, I see that that almost exact statement, tell us why this appears to be phonier than a $3 bill, was made in new bombshell Sandy Hook information inbound in that 7IB video we talked about earlier. Sure. No, no, and I understand there are going to be things in that video that's said for. In fact, that's, that's right. how I preface this entire discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you're going off of what you're reading right there in the petition, right? Going off of what? what when you mean? say, for instance, when you just talked about the house being bulldozed or yes. fake as a $3 bill, you're reading that out of plaintiff's petition. Well, yeah, I read the right. statements, right? Okay. You don't know what else was said about Sandy Hook other than what was in that petition. For this particular video? Right. No. For JFK assassination documents to drop tonight? No. No, you don't. Okay. No. Well, let's move on that from the video. Then. Oh wait, actually, do you know? Do you know what employees were involved in creating that video? Um, unless it's on that list that we've previously marked. Do you want to? Yeah, let's take out list? that list. Yeah, take out that list. Tell me if it is. Mm. <coughs> so. 
So this is Exhibit 6, mm -hmm. October 26, 2017. No, that's not one of the dates that's on here. So in other words, you won't be able to tell me what employees were involved in creating this video? No, these dates go from 2013 through 2015. Correct. So one of the most recent videos in Plaintiff's Petition, one that was published mere months before Mr. Jones was sued, that's not part of the information you secured about what employees were involved in creating, right? I don't, like I said, I don't know if we even have this video. I, I, I'm not asking you about the video and if you were able to find the video. I'm asking you about a different topic, which is the employees involved in making that video. Oh, no, if it's not on that list, I don't have it. Okay. Let's go to paragraph 59. Okay. You see that talks about a June 26, 2017 video entitled Zero Hedge Discovers Anomaly in Alex Jones' Hit Piece. Uh, I don't know the title of the video just by looking at paragraph. Is it 59? I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. And it doesn't have the title in that paragraph. You're right. Uh, okay. So but you, in other words, just let me help you. This is the video that Mr. Hessel is suing the company for defamation about involving mm -hmm. his own story in which Mr. Shorter claimed that he couldn't have held his child. You understand what that video is? Yes, I okay. did watch that video. Okay, you watched that video. Okay. Do you know what employees were involved in creating that video? Um, sh sure. Let me just, if I may, look at my notes. Mm -hmm. uh, da -da -da. I have two fucking hammers. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Are you asking me whether there were, what, for a list of employees for that video? I want to know for that employee, every employee who was involved in what their role was. I don't know what the answer to that question is. All I can know as far as the sourcing, I think we already talked about the sourcing material, but if you're asking me yeah, that's... every single person that worked on that particular day, if it's not on this list of Exhibit 6, I don't know. So that date is not on these lists. Okay, so when you had this video to get prepared, for and you yeah. knew you'd have to be prepared on the in employees who were involved in it what did you do to make sure you were prepared to talk about that video i'm prepared to talk about the sourcing of the video which i think we already talked about um and when we spoke to melinda we tried to have her pull as much as possible the information for the people that was working were working that day which is not an easy task for her so and she put together that document because she was the one that was reviewing the records okay but as far as other people that were working on that video, you know, I the hate the, the rats video, so if, much. If you're asking, you know, the They're so the weird. Video, the rats and the, the dogs in this game are like real tough. Was the producer for that, they wouldn't have had any real tough. involvement regarding the content of what's on that video. So, like the production manager that was that was doing the video or doing the sound or whatnot, they're not. They don't have. They don't have any involvement in that. So when I talk to production and people um, involved in the production, my understanding from talking to them was that the host sources their content, they pick what they want to talk about, and then the producers get them the information that they request as far as video clips. And then the host is the one that does the sourcing. Okay. So that's just based on my conversations with how they do things. But from my understanding, production doesn't have any involvement in the content. Okay. So I would take it if you were going to try to figure out what went on in this video, a person you might want to talk to is Owen Shorter. I, I read his deposition. Did you interview him? I didn't talk to him. I don't, I don't know that he was available. I can't remember. Okay, but you did read his deposition. I did. All right, the reason I'm troubled is because he just, he testified to the exact opposite. He said, he said, he said that he'd had nothing to do with picking the story or sourcing it or anything. Oh, for that fuck's somebody sake. on the produ production staff, one of the producers of the production staff, got that material, researched and sourced it, and gave it to him, and he just read it on the air. Do I you don't think, think he's that that's, wrong? I don't think that that's what the context of his testimony was. The context, I believe, of his testimony is that every day, and this is not just for Owen, but for any host, is that the associate I mean, producers put Who knows together what the fuck is down here that I'm not going to be able to whatever sources that the, that host likes. So, for example, 
Alex has a list of sources that he gets printed out on a daily basis. Owen has a list of sources that he uses. The assistant, pro the producer, is the one that provides all this material and says, "Here, this is the, this is the material that's off the list that you get. That is your list." And then the host reviews that material and decides what he wants to talk about. All right, we'll leave that right there. All right, and in terms of who those associate producers were, on that, in that particular room, day, know. no. Yeah. But again, that would it would just be pulling the information off of the off of the internet based on their list. What does it mean? What does that mean? So, each, like I said earlier, each of the hosts has a list of sources that they pull from. So, Zero Hedge is a source that is on that list that they pull from and so they'll print off the articles for them off of that list. So what I'm, I'm trying, I think I hear, is that it's like just every day Owen wants everything that was on Zero Hedge printed and brought to him? Right. Okay. All the articles that were on for that day. Okay. And then he'll filter through that and decide. Okay. We, do you know what was done to research or vet this information before it was put on the air? to vet the uh, information that was in the Zero Hedge article. And everything that Owen said, too. Can you be more specific about what he said? Cause so, and, and those Absolutely. are two separate questions. OK, no. well, those are two separate questions. So the information in the Zero Hedge article would have been vetted by Zero Hedge or whomever produced the article. And as far as sourcing for the video that was used in that article, uh, the source was the video that was on Zero Hedge. Okay, so let's first start, okay. let's first start with the things that were in the Zero Hedge article were vetted by Zero Hedge. Is that or right? whoever produced that article. Okay, and do you know who that is? I think it was. I think originally we. I think we talked about this. It came from oh. iBank Coin originally, and then it was picked up by Zero Hedge. So whoever produced it would have been iBank Coin. Well, actually, Originally. just to help you out, Zero Point Now writes for both. I mean, he, he reposts his articles. Like, it's okay. just, they're just posted in both places. Okay. It's not like there's a, a guy at a, a thing called iBank Coin, and then Zero Hedge was like, wow, we saw that, we picked up. I just want you to know for your benefit, Zero Point Now is the author of that article, and he's the author of it at iBank Coin, too. Okay. Um, have you talked to Zero Point Now? No. Okay. When you say that Zero Hedge vetted that. I take that to mean InfoWars did nothing to vet that before it was put on the air. InfoWars used that article as a source and quoted to that source. That, I, I think you know that's not what I'm asking. It is what you're asking. I, I know that I understand they quoted it as a source. I understand it was on the video. I'm trying to understand that one of two things happened. One is that Owen Troyer or whoever got it was handed a video or handed this document and gone, all right, let's put this on the air. And nothing was done internally and into InfoWars to verify the factual accuracy of the things being said in that article. Or two, there were steps taken by InfoWars to make sure that the things said in that article were true before they got put on. No, InfoWars, the company relies on the reporting done by other other news sources to vet their information. Is Zero Point now a news source? It's a source for their information, so it's on the list of sources that they use to get information from. Is it a news source? I don't know if you'd call it news, but well, it's a source. I'm bringing up that word because you said news source, so I'm it's trying to figure out. It's a source of, it's on their list of sources that they pull from on a daily basis. Okay, so the... It's my understanding that Zero Hedge is like an accumulator of other various sites. So it's like... They have other, they're citing to the variety oh of Oh boy, these guys are quick and hit hard. Got it. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, just because we may talk about Zero Hedge sure. more. Zero Hedge okay. is not like Reddit or an aggregator or a new site that, or Drudge or something like that, right? You know who Tyler Durden is? No. All right, you may oh, know but I know Drudge is an accumulator, right? right. Yes. So, like, you may know Tyler Durden, he's the main character in Fight Club um, that Brad Pitt played. But oh, that's, yeah. Okay. That's the name of the person who runs Zero Hedge. Okay. Or at least what they call themselves. Okay. And that person writes articles for Zero Hedge. And then there's other con contributors like Zero Point Now, and they mm -hmm. write for Zero Hedge, right? Okay. So what I want to make sure that you understand is that this wasn't something that Zero Hedge aggregated from anywhere. This was something Zero Hedge wrote. You understand that? Okay. Okay. So as far as the person, the source that was quoted here, um, InfoWars 
for this deposition did nothing to try to talk to them or get any information. To talk to someone at Zero Hedge? Mm -hmm. No, I did not. Okay. And by the same token, any of the videos that were used by Mr. Shorter in that broadcast that came from Zero Hedge or mm -hmm. are alleged to have come from Zero Hedge? Um, nothing to track down. The one that was on the Zero Hedge article and then was subsequently re-aired on InfoWars? See, I can't make that representation because the Zero Hedge article, none of those videos actually were. There. They were all removed a long time ago. Okay. Time. So when you say Damn that those, are, those videos in the... In the, in the Pressed in the my attack button one too many times. Zero Hedge, I'd like very much to verify that. I'd like to right. know where they so, and I And I think I do have an answer for that just based on my conversations with, uh, with various people in in the company over the last week, which is, um, and I don't know that Owen really knew it either in his deposition, because I believe you asked him that question and mm -hmm. he wasn't sure, um, but uh, the source of the video was the Zero Hedge article. They did not, because I asked, you know, I interviewed and asked video people, I was like, all right, well, did you guys cut this video? Because at some point they have the whole video of Moon Carver, but they didn't use the whole video and then cut it. The video that they got was from that article. It was already pre-cut. They didn't do anything to cut that video. Who told you that? Um, I believe that information came from, it was either Daria or it wasn't Owen because I didn't talk to Owen. Um, of course, I oh, can't you know, roll. I, when I spoke to Rob Dew, oh, yeah, Rob okay. Dew told Running me to the that restaurant that's right where it came Rob Dew wasn't involved in making this video, right? I don't think he was, but at the time, I want to say he was the, he was a, not supervisor, but, you know, they don't have titles there, but he was overseeing Owen. I don't know what you mean. I know, Rob Dew definitely has been, had titles. I think he gave himself a title, but nobody there really has an official title. Okay. Um, and so Rob Dew... Does he know firsthand that those videos were taken unedited from the Zero Hedge site, or is that his guess based on how he thinks things work inside the company? No, when I asked Rob, Rob was sure that that's where it was from. I, I mean, I'm not understanding how he would know what went on in that room that day. Do I you? don't know either. I'm not, I wasn't. Okay. But I did ask Rob, and that was his answer. Can you tell me, okay, so these list of sources that are m 4s chooses to amplify, right? Well, Does, it chooses to source from, but yeah. What, what's your problem with the word amplify? Isn't that the word you used earlier? Um, so that, my problem is, is that even me, if a uh, article is being sourced from these places, they're not amplifying every single article that is being sourced from these places. They're being printed and presented to the gotcha. host and then the host is choosing from amongst those. Okay, so instead of me saying it, um, the sources that are amplified, when I say that there's a list of sources whose some of the articles from those sources are amplified. Yes. Right, um, who makes the decision, who made the decision here that zero point, um, zero point Now or Zero Hedge was a reliable place to be getting information from? Um, so you mean in general, is there some company um, rule as to which sources are reliable and which sources are not reliable? Not really a rule, but just anything that's ever done. So these are these are sources that are generally trusted by the hosts. Um, these lists, so to speak, of, of sources uh, change over time. So like, for example, when I spoke to Nico, Nico's position to me was Alex's source list was shorter than it is now. When I talk to Daria, he has a he has a list of sources like seven or eight long. But so it evolves over time and ultimately it it the information that is preferred comes from the host. So the host would choose which sources they like to get information from. Um, like other hosts such as um, such as Mr. Knight, according to Daria, he didn't have a list that they produced for him on a daily basis he would just he would himself read the news sort read read the internet and send to her already i want you to print this and be prepared to talk about this on my show so um ultimately the list is made by the host okay so the so the 
kind of short version for this particular video, mm -hmm. for this particular video, who decided that it would be reliable? The answer to that is Owen Shorter. Yes. Um, Jim Fetzer's quoted in this video? Uh, yes, to the extent I believe that it's quoted in, in, the, in the original article. Okay, and we, I think we've already covered this, but you didn't speak to Mr. Fetzer, right? No, I did didn't, not. Didn't try to speak to Mr. Fetzer? No, I did not. Okay. Um, and Owen had made some sort of judgment, you would agree with me, that it was appropriate to rely on Mr. Fetzer's conclusions about this, right? <clears throat> Which conclusion are you talking about? The conclusions made by Fetzer in the June 26, 2017. Which, can you please right. specify the conclusion you're talking about? Yeah, do, I mean, I can go ahead and pull everything Fetzer said, but you, you understand no, the you're... point of that video, right? I, I understand the point the of the okay. video is that Let's get this uh, there is a claim Let's that was spread. made by Mr. Heslin in the Megyn Kelly interview that he held his son and had a bullet hole in his head uh -huh. and then there was a cut to the clip of Mr. Carver's interview which wasn't a whole contextual comment by Ms. by Dr. Carver mm -hmm. and then the comment that was made was these two things are inconsistent which is it essentially is that and that is what you're representing is the comment attributed to Mr. Fetzer I, I want to make sure that yeah and I think you've okay. mostly got it I, I think where you were the little bit left is the conclusion of, of where you reach from those is that Mr. Heslin's version of the case. I, I disagree that that's what the purpose or conclusion that was conveyed by Mr. Schwein. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying about Mr. Fetzer. Oh, okay. Well, if that's what Mr. Fetzer was concluding, that's not what Owen Schwein concluded in his Okay, he literally oh, come on. Said, Let's go the shirt. He literally said in the What the fuck is this perfumer lady doing? Mr. Heslin said he held his kid. Now, oh, now she's checkers. taking it. I ain't really need to change off of her. Right? According to the, this video by Dr. Carver, who says yeah. X, these two things uh, cannot both be true. Can we get a clarification? I don't think we're going to get a clarification, but can we get a clarification either from Mr. Heslin or M Megan Kelly? And then he said, I doubt, I doubt that's going to happen or something to that effect. I think that's a fairly good paraphrase. Right. You did a good job there. Um, in other words, at some point when coming to his decisions about what he was going to put on the air, Mr. Shorter had to decide that Mr. Fetzer was an okay thing to be sharing with the InfoWars audience, right? I think he made a decision that the, that the report on Zero Hedge was an okay thing to be sharing with the, with the audience. Right, and that contains Jim Fetzer's conclusions, right? It contained information and in quotations from another person, yes. Yes, so by logical extension, by the way the rules of logic works, if Mr. Schroyer decided that Zero Edge article was appropriate to share, which communicates directly information from Mr. Fetzer, then he also decided that it was appropriate to share with his audience the information that Mr. Fetzer was needed. Um, so is this a question that you're, you're asking me whether he made a determination as to the credibility of Mr. Fetzer? Is that what you're asking? I, I think I asked appropriate. <sighs> yeah, but, it, but you're not re regard making him make a credibility determination. When you say appropriate, what do you mean by appropriate? I, okay, so when, how does InfoWars decide what's appropriate to share in terms of sources? Is it, are you asking what is reliable as a, as a, as a source? If, if, if that's one of the things that InfoWars cares about in determining whether a source is appropriate, then yeah, I would expect that to be in the answer. So I think that that just has to do with the relationship with, you know, the... Um, prior history of the particular source. So if that particular source has been credible in the past, for example, Zero Hedge, they have reported on Zero, they have re-reported, I should speak, on uh, Zero Hedge articles in the past. Those have seemed to be reliable, so they would continue to rely on it on this in the future. Same thing for Mr. Fetzer? I don't know that they've ever really amplified Mr. Fetzer's in information. Mm -hmm. You've seen, certainly you've seen discussions about Mr. Fetzer, right? I have seen discussions about And about Mr. how InfoWars was relying on to, I don't think he was being relied on to a very uh, to a very high degree. I don't think that that was a big source of their information. And the reason why I say this is because, um, first, my, I, when I talked to Mr. Watson, Mr. Watson made clear that 
there was no good relationship at the time between Alex Jones and Mr. Fetzer. They did not like one another. Right. Um, second is, you know, in my conversations with Alex, he had never even read Fetzer's material. I don't even think he knows what's in there. I agree. Um, so I don't know. I don't think that it's accurate to say that Mr. Jones relied on Fetzer in any real meaningful way. Okay, uh, th this is where I'm maybe getting caught up is the real meaningful way, because to me, I can understand what you're saying if you're saying. I don't think they relied on a, a bunch. But you would agree with me that there are multiple videos we're going to be talking about today where the assertion of fact comes directly from Mr. Fetzer. Mr. Fetzer was never a uh, guest on the show talking about this particular issue, but I do see in some of the videos that he is quoted as a source uh, amongst other sources. I see. This is where I'm really drawing a problem is because there has been criticism inside the company. God for damn, these guys are fucked, right? man. Well, and, For Sandy Hook. and you're referring specifically to an email that Mr. Watson has has promulgated, and I know which email you're talking about. And I specifically asked about that email, and his position is is that he understands Mr. Fetzer wasn't being relied on to a really to any real degree. He knows Fetzer was not being relied on that heavily. There were other people that were listed in that email <sighs> aside from Fetzer. Jeff Rince, right? Right. They actually probably didn't rely on Jeff Rince much at all, did they? I don't even see that man refer to much in the material. Yeah, um, it was more Fetzer. Well, I mean, like I said, I don't even see Fetzer refer to much in the material. I understand that Mr. Watson made that e did that email, but as far as the video goes, he's, you, he's not on a lot of the videos. Do you think that's the only criticism of Mr. Fetzer inside the company? Is that email that you saw? I'm saving. That's the only Neat. email that I can recall at this point. And certainly when reviewing the production, you saw the volume of emails from Jim Fetzer. I know Jim Fetzer sent a volume of emails. I can't speak to whether they were read by the company for the same email, for the same reason as Mr. Harbaugh. Right, because after a guy sends you maybe your sixth, 8,000, 12,000 email, start just ignoring it. Maybe even before that. <laughs> maybe before that. That's why I'm saying I understand that he sends emails, but I don't know that anybody really read it or responded to it. Or so, like so, well, first of all, did you ask anybody if they had ever looked at Mr. Fetzer's emails? So, um, I talked to Mr. Jones about Mr. Fetzer. Mr. Jones's position is he didn't really, he didn't rely on Mr. Fetzer. All right. Uh... You would agree with me that by June 26, 2017, the company had, I mean, in other words, before this video, prior to this video on June 26, 2017, that discusses information from Mr. Hetzer, Mr. Fetzer, the company had in its possession an extremely large volume of emails from Mr. Fetzer, which clearly reveal to any rational person that Mr. Fetzer is not mentally balanced. Correct? Are you asking whether they're in our possession yes. or whether we... Re yes, we're, they're in our possession. They're on our email server. And you never read them. I can't answer as to whether they were ever read. Unless there's something forwarding it from somebody else or there was a response to it in any way. But generally, if, if what he does is, and what I saw, what he does is he copies very many people in his emails. I think it was he, I think he had a bunch of emails copied to random people as well. But, I mean, I could be wrong, but in any event, like I said, um, unless if, if it's into either a general mailbox, like info ad or writer's ad, info wars, um, but even specific emails like to Nico, they're not, they weren't responding or monitoring his emails. I God, see, I damn it! Just as funny, you don't know if they read the emails. And now I don't know they if they didn't. read them. I don't know if they read them, but what I'm saying to you is when I spoke to Nico, his position is, I didn't even bother responding or even reading these emails because I knew he wasn't going to be on the show. It wasn't relevant to me because unless I need to book them to be on the show, mm -hmm. I don't pay attention to these emails. So, and I think we already know that Mr. Jones doesn't pay attention to the emails. So, um, it, in all likelihood, Nobody was reading those emails. <laughs> and before his information was used on June 26, 2017, nobody read those emails, to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. Okay. But if somebody had, 
if somebody had taken the effort before putting Mr. Fetzer's stuff on the air in 2017 of reading those emails, they would have come to the conclusion that Mr. Fetzer is not a well man. You would agree understand with this shit. I really, really don't. I mean, I think that that's kind of speculation at this point because nobody, I don't think anybody read the emails. Have you? Read those emails in the production? Yeah, from Mr. Fetzer. I've read some of his emails. Not yeah, they're not good, are they? No, they're not. They're, they're not a, a man who's not, oper my mom used to say, uh, not with a full deck. You know what that means? I do know what that okay. means. Uh, I don't think I don't, he has a full deck. I don't, I don't want, um, info yeah, not, I mean, again, I'm, I'm not trying to get InfoWars to give, give psychological opinions or whatever, but if InfoWars had read those emails, and now you as the corporate representative who's had, they would understand that that is not a good man to be relying on, right? I think it was more so they were relying on the Zero Hedge reporting, more so than Mr. Fetzer. I'm saying if they had. If I'm they saying had. If, they, if they had, I, don't, I can't answer that because it's speculating, but what I'm saying is, is even if someone, just for example, I have, I, I'm a criminal defense attorney, you know this, right? I have people that are not operating with full decks, they have psychological issues. That doesn't mean that everything that they say is false. So it, it does, it just doesn't. It's just, okay. you know, so um, it's hard to pick and choose what is false and what is not false. However, I would say that the reliability of Mr. Schroyer is not on Mr. Fetzer, it's on the reporting of Zero Hedge. You understand what I'm saying? So I do. No, Zero I get Hedge it. would have, in publishing the article, would have vetted the claim. Would they? That's what the, so Info How do you know that? Because InfoWars' entire premise is, it's commentary. Like I said, it's like, it's just, it's like, it's like a citizen blogger, commentator on it, whatever, okay? So we're not doing independent independent analysis or independent journalism or I'm not investigating these things. We're not investigative reporters. So we're pulling other articles from the internet. Those people are writing their articles. We've seen those that those sources have been reliable in the past and we are relying on those people to vet their own sources. If they don't vet their own sources, that's that's on Finally the Jesus not fucking Christ. Hands clean for anything they put on the show that they didn't themselves write is what you're saying. That's the position. Okay. Let's go to paragraph 55 of that. <clears throat> Do you see a, a video discussed from June 13th, 2017? Oh, that's kind of cool. Yes. And that's entitled Media Refuses to Report Alex Jones' Real Statements on Sandy Hook? Yes. You've seen that, right? If I could just go back to my notes. I got a number on that if it'll help you. Yeah, just, no, just give me one second. It's okay. fine. Uh, the date is fine. 613. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Let me go on. Nine? Is that where we're at? Do you recognize this from the video? Yes. Okay, so this is a screenshot from the June 13th, 2017 video. Um, and you understand that at one point in the video, Mr. Jones puts this list up uh, that contained his questions on Sandy Hook, right? Uh, yes. So okay. this is this is just to make sure where this is the one, the video that's in response to the Megyn Kelly interview. It's actually not in response, it's more preemptive. He, knows yeah, he had already done the interview, but it hadn't aired yet. That's exactly. right. Exactly. He knows it's coming out. Let me just, um, if I can, I'm going to go to my specific information. This is where I ran out of tabs. At some point, we will get to where I didn't run out of tabs.
Oh no. Okay, here we go. Okay, you ready to talk about this one? Yes. Okay, so what I have in front of you, again, that we had talked about was some questions that Mr. Jones has that he put up under his What Alex Jones Really Believes video. Yes. Right? Okay. So the first question that we see is why does the Sandy Hook Elementary School website have zero traffic for four years? You yeah. see that? Yes. All right, you know where that comes from. Yes, I believe that the topic, the source for that particular contention was the Wayback Machine. Uh, mm. All right, so is it your, so your, uh, first of all, are you saying InfoWars went and figured this out, went to the Wayback Machine and came up with this theory on its own? Oh, you mean where is this source, uh, the original source for this belief? I'm not sure, but I know that we have amongst our documents a printout from the Wayback Machine, so at the very least, if it wasn't originated here, it was checked into because we have the way back machine right i, I mean, believe he he even put that on if it wasn't in this video it might have mm -hmm. been another video he did like a screenshot like a desk yeah. cam to the way back machine desk cam of this way back yes stuff. where does that come from where did he get that you mean where did he get the idea to go there i don't know i don't think he, he didn't go there i'm sorry he didn't go there well that, that picture i know where that picture's from okay okay so i'm trying to figure out if you know where that all I can testify is to the document that I saw from okay. the Wayback Machine. Okay. That's I, a chapter in Jim Fetter's book. Did you okay. know that? I did not know that. He wrote a book called Nobody Died at Sandy Hook. You know that? I know. He wrote a book, yes. Yeah, and the whole Wayback Machine thing that is totally false and not real okay. comes from Jim Fetter. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. Okay. I didn't go to the Wayback Machine myself to check. Well, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't know. How would you even go there? I mean, what, what would you look up? I don't know. I didn't go to check it out myself. All I saw was the document from the Wayback Machine. That's all we I saw. You just saw that there was something from the Wayback Machine, which yes. is shown in the video. They show a yes. picture of it. Yes. And you did nothing to follow up to figure out where that came from. I, aside from looking at the document that this was produced seems different as the source, than it no. was last okay. time. So you didn't ask anybody about this claim? About the Wayback Machine? Uh -huh. I asked Alex Jones, and Alex Jones' con contention is that he saw it on the Wayback Machine. I think he tested, I don't know, I'm pretty sure he testified to it. I think you're thinking, maybe thinking of Miss Carpenter said that. Yes, she did. You're right. Mm -hmm. She just said the Wayback Machine. The Wayback Machine. Like, as though that's a source or something, right? Like, like, what, but what well, I was Well, I mean, it is, a, it is a source. Whether it's an accurate source or not is up for debate. But it, it, it is a source. Source, all that means is where does this information come from as far as you're aware Yeah, of but it. what I'm getting at right. is that, that screenshot? Yes. Isn't it just a screenshot of the web page, the Wayback Machine? Mm -hmm. It's a screenshot of some stuff, some various stuff from the Wayback Machine. Somebody put that together. I don't know who put that together. Okay. And so if it was Mr. Fetzer, you wouldn't know anything about that? I don't know. Okay. Several reports of other shooters dressed in camouflage who fled into the woods, one of whom police allegedly detained. Where does that come from? What are those reports? Um, actually, there were a few reports. So on the day of the shooting, and this is pretty common um, when there are active shooter events, um, mm -hmm. for there to be incoming news or breaking news that maybe not necessarily won't be accurate that particular time but would be checked later on and maybe clarified but on the day of the shooting um mr jones did cut to a couple of different sources for this claim the first claim being that there was some helicopter footage of someone running around in the woods he did cut to that footage um, there were also a couple of other art, um, news sources that um, that cut that listed possible second shooter. Um, then there are also. Are you fucking was, kidding me? In, there was a uh, interview with a person on the scene who says that he saw someone being taken out of the woods dressed in camouflage and handcuffs and he cut to the video footage of that particular individual. Okay, so let's talk about this first one, this helicopter footage. Yes. You understand there's helicopter footage of some people in the woods and the police questioning them. Um, whether that particular person was questioned, I don't know, but the, the purpose of that footage was just to show that there were people chasing someone else in the woods, so. Okay, those, those though, that video comes from well into the afternoon, well after the shooting, right? Did you know that? 
Uh, I know there is a time stamp on the video, yes. Okay, and so if you were to see that, you and because those are reporters, is what that is, there's some reporters mm -hmm. who start walking into the woods. Mm -hmm. if, if there's a video that's taken hours after everything's all over and there's all sorts of media all over the place, that's not a second shooter, right? I don't, I, well, first of all, I don't know if that person that was running and being chased in the woods was a reporter. There were also some secondary reports of an off-duty SWAT officer that was found in the woods. I don't know if that's the same person. So, yeah, there, it could, there could be saying, any number of reasons why someone's running around in the woods. You're saying a SWAT officer was detained in those woods? So I think that after those those articles, not articles, but reports of a possible second shooter and this person being taken out in handcuffs because of the video footage and the question of there being a potential shooter, it came out somewhere that there was an off-duty SWAT officer that was in the woods at that time. Have you been able to find that? The reports of that? Any of the, I mean, any yeah, of these. I, I, yeah, yeah, that's in the disclosures. Um, but I will say, I mean, hold I on, lived whoa, whoa, in whoa, Connecticut. Back up, hold on. What does disclosures mean? What do you mean? I mean, it's in the discovery material that I was reviewing, that I reviewed. It's in one of the documents. But also, I just will say that okay. was pretty common for that day. I mean, I lived in Connecticut. The SWAT, SWAT teams from all over the state were called in. So it wasn't really something that was out of the realm that it would be an, a SWAT officer you, out there. You're just speculating on that. I'm not, I, I know Based that on your own personal life of what you think goes on in law enforcement, but you mm. cannot tell me if there was a single person on scene that day dressed in SWAT gear, can you? Actually, yes, I can. Okay. Just because we pointed to the evidence that was in the record of a person who was taken out of the woods in SWAT gear, and secondly, there was an, uh, a statement put out that there was an officer, an off-duty officer, taken off the property. So, Right, no. so he's not in SWAT gear. I don't know whether he was in SWAT gear. Do you think SWAT officers walk around off duty geared up in SWAT material? Depends. No, uh, does it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, so, uh, you, uh, never mind, that's ridiculous. Okay. Um, let's go to the. And right there, she is showing that she is heavily biased by some external feature. Next question here. Why was why were porta potty sandwich fruits, drinks, and chips brought and set up for people at the crime scene to eat inside the school? What's the source for that? So um, I think that the source of this in just my discussions with um, with all the various employees were um, this was one of or maybe two of Halbig's sixteen questions that he asked and that he found to be quote-unquote anomalies in his opinion. Okay, so how do you know that's how, so how do they know that's Halbig's stuff? Is just just personal knowledge of the employees you talk to, is what you're saying? How do I know this is Halbig's stuff? Yeah. All of this, these questions, these particular questions really didn't appear until Halbig's first interview, and Halbig's first interview, he does go over these particular allegations. Okay, so let's stop talking allegations plural, because we know number one allegation about the Wayback Machine. Halbig's never said anything about Right? No, I'm talking about we're still on the same bullet right. point, but I, the reason why I'm breaking it up is because I don't want to write on this. This is an exhibit, but porta potties. He made one allegation. I don't know if you've read Mr. Halbig's 16 points, but he breaks these down into separate points. One was the porta potties. Another was the sandwiches and fruit drinks that were brought in gotcha. for the, off the officers and eaten at a various at whatever point in time he was cleaning. Um, and then that. And then there was a separate one where he was saying that people were eating lunch inside the school amongst the crime scene. Okay, and InfoWars just took Halbig's word for this, right? He was the source for those particular claims. InfoWars has done absolutely nothing to verify any of that claim beyond just listening to Halbig. No, there's been no independent research into those claims. No. InfoWars has never seen a video of anybody eating food inside the school or anything like that, huh? I, uh, no, to my knowledge, I don't think there's ever been any video footage from the inside of the school. Okay. Um, as far as the porta potties and floors, never did anything to verify when those. Were no, I, I believe that was the subject of Mr. Halbig's FOIA request, but it, as, and then those were covered in subsequent broadcasts. His well, attempts to get that information. You know, Infowars has made attempts to secure the uh, dash cam cam dash cam cameras of the police cars we're sitting in. Has Infowars? I'm honestly, I'm, I don't know. I know Halbig has. I know Halbig was 
went up and did a FOIA request and he was disclosed that information, well, maybe not disclosed, but he was given the opportunity to view the dash cam footage. Rob Dews also talked about the dash cam footage, right? He has, yes. Okay, so InfoWars knows that there is a video recording of everything that shows up into that parking lot. I don't want to say everything. Um, dashboard, ca dashboard cam does not capture everything, but there is dashboard camera footage of the parking lot. Dash cam footage might have trouble detecting a mosquito showing up in that parking lot, right? Well, I'm not talking about mosquitoes, sir. I'm talking about like angles. I don't know if it picked up the entire parking lot. Um, not every car at that time had dashboard camera footage. Now, body camera footage is very prolific, but at that time, I don't think anybody had bo uh, body camera footage. So when I say I don't know if it captured everything, I don't know what the angles of those dashboards, are, the dashboard cameras are. So I'm not talking about mosquitoes. I'm talking about angles and whether it captured the entire parking lot. And the company doesn't know any of that either, right? No. Never tried to find out, right? No. Uh, as I said, we didn't uh, do any independent research into this. Okay. That sounds like negligence, to me at least. Let's go to that next one, uh, Sandy Hook father Robbie Parker getting into character. Yes. That's the that's that's an allegation from inside Infowars, right? That doesn't come from any source. That's just Mr. Jones and Mr. Do saying they believe Robbie Parker looks like an actor, right? Um, so so yes, I think that originally this this is an opinion of the uh, the video that they viewed of Mr. Parker. Uh, before giving that interview, I believe it was the same day, um, and I'm sure as you know, Mr. Dew is a, or was a theater major, and so in his opinion, based on his studies, when he saw that video, he believed it was getting into character. What does the company believe was happening there? On that video? Mm -hmm. I mean, this goes into the distinction we've been talking about, about how individual people in the in the company have their own positions, but the company does not have a position on that issue. I don't have an opinion on whether that was getting into character. How does the company feel about Mr. Jones and Mr. Dew saying that? I think that that's their opinion and they're entitled to it. No, okay, I can understand. That's what the company may feel about their right or their ability to say it. Mm -hmm. Does the company have an opinion on what they said? on whether or not this was getting into character and whether it was nice? No, not necessarily that so much. Not so much the accuracy, but sort of like, is the company proud of that? Am I proud of the... What Mr. Jones and Mr. Deuce said about Mr. Parker? Is the company proud of that? I don't think the company takes a position on it. Is the company... It's an opinion that right. belongs okay. to two individual people. Is the company... And the company doesn't have a belief that this it person that it's getting into character, but it's based on their opinion. Who owns the company now again? Alex Jones owns the company. Okay. He's an individual now. So, does the company feel embarrassed by what Mr. Jones or Mr. Deuce said about Mr. Parker? No, I think it's an opinion. Does the company feel any remorse about what Mr. Jones or Mr. Deuce said about Mr. Parker? Remorse? Do I think that the company feels bad that Mr. Parker was upset about the coverage? Sure. But as far as the statement, is, it's an opinion, and it could be drawn from, you know, it, it is a, an opinion that could be drawn from what you see on that video. Okay, so in other words, the company may have a greater latitude in terms of what it may think is appropriate or not appropriate, or what it may be embarrassed of or proud of or remorseful for. It may matter whether the thing being said is a fact or an opinion, right? Sure. Okay, so there are this particular thing. You can say, for instance, this is not something that's, this is a personal viewpoint. I saw that and it looked, this is how it looked to me. So that's clearly an opinion, right? Yes. Okay. There are other things Jones and employees have said about Sandy Hook that are not opinions. They are very much facts. Fact. I would agree that they have stated uh, pieces of information that have been gleaned from other sources and taken those as fact. Well, let's go back to the Wayback Machine thing. Yes. Right? Nobody, they're not repeating anybody's words there, according to you. They just, that's the source of the Wayback Machine. They said that. Right? InfoWars said, this is what the Wayback Machine said. I think right? we said, I'm not really sure where that original, originally came, how that okay. came to their attention. I'm not sure okay. how it originally came to, but I know that he put that screenshot on his camera. And have never tracked down that screenshot or where it came from. I don't know where the screenshot came from. Gotcha. Okay. 
Um, an FBI crime stat which says no murders occurred in Newtown in 2012. Yes. That's a piece of InfoWars independent research, right? Nobody else researched that. Yes, yeah, so that was, I did speak to our staff on this particular claim. So, I'm not very um, good at this game, this in case you This is a source that was actually sourced from the FBI.gov website, a screenshot of which was put on to and attached to the article. It was written by Adon Salazar. I think he, depo he was deposed in connection with this article. Um, not at, here. Just wanted to make sure you understand, not in touch. Yeah, it might, uh, you're right, it was in Connecticut. Um, and so essentially uh, what happened with the article, and um, it, it was not reported from another source. So it was original reporting um, in, in the context of Mr. Salazar because it was not found from another source. It mm -hmm. was, he went to the FBI.gov and he saw this and then the problem with the number, it does say zero for Newtown for 2012, but the problem for the Does article, it or does it say that for Newtown? If you'd let me finish. Um, but what it says is the FBI.gov stats is per town, not mm -hmm. per department. So per town, Newtown says zero, but at, if you scroll to the very bottom, like at the end of the list of towns, mm -hmm. there's an asterisk that says the state police do not report to the FBI. Mm -hmm. So that is the source of the confusion, so to speak, or the error, error. for that particular stat. But it does say if you scroll down to Newtown, it does say zero, but he didn't scroll all the way down the page to see the asterisk. And honestly, I don't know the answer as to why the state police do don't report to the FBI. Every other department individually reports to the FBI their statistics. Okay. Just to make sure that you're not putting things on the record that are evidence. Sure. Right? They absolutely 100% do report to the FBI. There's actually a 500-page report that that chart is generated from. It has departments from every department in Connecticut. Yeah. Has, for the Connecticut State Police, lists the 27 children murdered at Sandy Hook. Has an asterisk saying these are the 27 children. I just wanted to make sure you understand. Okay, at the bottom of that reported. article, uh, not the article, but at the bottom of the FBI.gov, all that's really in there is the asterisk. It does not include state police statistics. That's all it says. Right. So you would, he would have had to go and research the reason why that the state police do, do, did not report for that particular those particular numbers and things like that. Or he, he would need to pull up the document referred to on that chart, the UCR. You know what the UCR is? Right, but what I'm saying is he can scroll all the way bottom. No, but up at the top of the Oh, okay. Where it says that these figures all here. Those guys go oh, okay. fucking. He never went no. no. All he did was look at the chart, saw the big fat zero, and then all reported right. it. And we talked about how this didn't come from anybody else. This was independent research done by Infowars on Sandy Hook, right? Right. That was a report that he did not get from someplace else. Apparently, as far as I know, it was something that somebody had seen. He might have gotten a tip on, you know, hey, look, this looks weird. Go check it out and saw it, and then he reported it on himself. That's a guess, though. No, that's when I talked to Adon, that's what he told me, that he no, got a does. tip. He, oh, so he did, this isn't, he, maybe he got a tip. He did no, a he tip. got a tip, and I mean, if you're asking me, he went just randomly to the FBI database because he wanted to check, no, he got a tip, hey, check this out, this looks weird, and he looked at it. Who took him out? Um, so that that's a source of confliction. I'm not really sure. So he said he thinks that uh, Mr. Daniels tipped it, um, but Mr. Daniels said he doesn't recall ever tipping him out on that. Okay. Um, so in all honesty, I'm not sure where that tip came from, but Adon's position is that it was a tip. Well, one thing we do know is InfoWars does do independent research investigative research. Um, I would say that on the whole, the answer is no. These are very out of character articles that we do not usually publish. So there were a couple here that Adon did that I, as I said earlier, Adon was more into this than most of the other people involved in, in InfoWars. Um, and so he did a couple of independent pieces that really were out of, out of the realm of what is usually done by the company. So like, for example, he did that Batman article. I don't know if you read I that one. I know about one. that one. Right, so um, he got a tip from somebody on social media and he's and saw that it was like, oh, okay, wow, that looks pretty cool. And he, he did this dive into 
you know, the three Batman movies and then what that area was called in the comics, and then he wrote that article. So that was independent reporting on his part. It's out, it's really not the usual uh, piece that the company would do. When, when a dawn got tipped off that the appearance of the moon in Sandy Hook on the Dark Knight map mm -hmm. could suggest predictive programming, that suggests foreknowledge of the same attack being staged by globalists and Illuminati types. He thought that was cool. Does he think it's cool? Is that a question? No, did he did. He did think that was cool. Are you asking me whether he did That's think that? That's the word you use. I'm just trying to confirm it. I no, I don't I think that what he thought was interesting and cool was that, oh look. Here's this, this common denominator, not a common denominator, but look, Sandy Hook is referenced here and it wasn't referenced in the first video. And then he was interested because he thought that the names and the commonality between the names was cool. He did a similar article about a slasher thriller thing, uh, Sandy Hook too, um, which he just found to be interesting just because of the name commonality. But um, as far as the other things sourced in there, I don't know that he thought that was cool, but the name commonality, I think he thought was cool. Let's take a detour over to the slasher film. Sure. Sandy Hook Laundry Party Massacre. Yes. Okay. You and, you've read documents about that? Uh, I believe I read the article and I spoke, spoke to Adon about it, yes. He's got emails they sent to people about it, right? He did tell me he reached out to the producer of that video. Have you seen those? Those, you know, those have been in deposition before. Yeah, I don't know if I've read the specific emails. I may have, but I just don't remember. I know they exist, though. I'm just I'm just trying to remember if you remember Adon saying to that person who ran that horror slasher mm -hmm. movie blog, we know this is ridiculous, but we're going to run it anyway. Do you remember him saying that to him? I don't dispute. I don't remember, in all honesty, but he could have very well said, said that. Okay. And All it is is just an interesting commonality between the names. That's all. Well, actually, no, Mr. Salazar wrote an email to the guy who ran that blog basically accusing him of foreknowledge of the Sandy Hook attack, didn't he? Oh, I don't know. I didn't read any email like that. So you don't remember the, you didn't read an email back from the guy at the horror blog telling me, don't ever contact me again, you bunch of weirdos? Uh, no, I didn't read any email like that. When I spoke to Adon, Adon's uh, position was that he received a response back from the producer that he had received a lot of communication about the name of the video following Sandy Hook and that he wanted to be left alone and he thought it was ridiculous. Okay. This next statement on the chart here that says, why didn't they let paramedics and EMTs into the building after 27 children were declared dead in eight minutes? Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Uh, so this is another of Halbig's 16 points and, uh, and it's not just one point, it's a couple of points. He uh -huh. breaks it. I would like to take a moment from all of this, like, very clinical diagnosis of this whole thing and uh, just remind everyone that it is fucking atrocious that uh, they said anything about this. Like, it, I, I think it's pretty obvious and I shouldn't have to say it, but I have to because this is the world we live in. It's abhorrent that any buddy would use that tragedy for personal gain in the way that Alex Jones and InfoWars did. This is a... Bit of the old virtue signal. Bastard. That's right, yeah. Aka made me come guzzling thunderfuck. Ow! No, bad. The mask bastard fuck. Ow! Bad person! No! Bad! Bad boy. Down. Oh no, I'm 
I'm so far away from any grace. I could run back here pretty well. I have just enough to level up. So I kind of want to. It down into so he breaks it down into one why didn't they let paramedics and ENTs in the building and two children were declared dead within eight minutes okay so uh, the source uh, the original source of that is Mr. Halbig. Infowars did nothing to check that right? No. Because we know paramedics and EMTs were let in the building. They were I did read the uh, portions of the uh, final Sandy Hook report. And that's something Infowars had in its possession that Rob Dew went out and got in 2013 right? Uh, I don't know if he went out and got it, but it was sent to him. It was in an email chain. He did receive it. Yeah. Yes. And he's actually talked about it with other people. Uh, I don't know if he talked about it with other people, but I know they had it. The next one Run. is why was Adam Lanza's home burned down by the bank? Where does that come from? Uh, this, this might be a mischaracterization of the claim that uh, Adam Lanza's house was was bulldozed. I don't think it was burned down, but I think it's uh, the claim, this goes back to that claim that the uh, the house was taken down. All right, I understand we know about something from property records or something about bulldozing, but what I'm wondering is how, did, how do we get to burn down? This? That's why I'm saying it's, I think it's a mischaracterization of that same claim, that the house is no longer standing. Mischaracterization by Jones himself. That it was burned instead of being bulldozed. Sure. That's what I'm trying to ask. That's Mr. Yes. Jones who did that. It's not It's not somebody else who was responsible for telling Jones that it was burned down. No. Mr. Jones just mischaracterized no, it. Right. I think that it's a mischaracterization of the fact okay, that this the house is no longer standing. Looks like a hell of a fight, and I have absolutely down. no fucking clue about what's can you behind go to, this uh, In your petition, can you go to paragraph 54 for me? Sure. Let's just do a couple be, of others, bro? and we'll take a break if that sounds good to you. So sure, I could I could use the bathroom. That okay. would be great. Let's get through this one here. This is Sandy Hook Vampires Exposed on April 22nd, 2017. You're familiar with that video, right? Yes. Let me just go back to my chart. And I'll just ask you while you're use looking because I'm sure you'll pull it up. You did watch this video? This yes, I remember watching this video. Okay. Yes, Sandy Hook Vampires Exposed, yes. Okay, so this video repeats a bunch of things said by Mr. Halbig. You'd agree with that? Uh... Yes, just give me one second while nope, I that's the wrong uh, spell. Pull up that my detailed notes on that video. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. <clears throat> What was your question? Uh, first of all, is it, I was wondering, what's, is there any particular significance to the orange and yellow on these charts? That's just to differentiate between where it ends, where one video ends and one video begins, just because so I can, so I can easily see where the notes for one end and one begins. Okay. Uh, the question was, this video has a bunch of stuff. Oh, I gotta fight myself. This is cool. This, this is, if I recall correctly, this was an extremely long video. Uh, there are a lot of things that were talked about in this video, but uh, some of the things that are in this video, uh, for example, they also talk about Pizzagate, um, Iraq, children dying in Iraq, WMDs, you know, um, stuff. There's a lot of things that are talked about in this video. It's a long video. So, but yes. Well, how long are Infowars videos usually? Well, that depends because um, Mr. Jones is going to do, do a three hour three three-hour segments and those will be broken up sometimes into shorter clips or sometimes it'll be just kept as long a clip so like some of these videos were two hours long or uh, this one what are we is this one of those i think this was a very long video ah i'm gonna fight it myself i don't think it was two hours but it was a long video right i think it's actually about 39 minutes no it, it's longer so i have notes up here uh for example 59 minutes 60 minutes. It's at least an hour long. Let's see. So, th see this one, we have it as, um, we have saved it as a video file. A video file that we have is, I'll read to you the name, R-U-N-1-J-K-H-W-T-X-L. And um, the other thing that video file was an hour long. 
So you, you know, you may be, it may be accurate that it, there were some clips that were shorter um, that you may have, you may have access to, but it is in, it is a part of a larger video oh, file. You got. Okay, well, I'm not sure. I'm not ah. Sorry, the on. I thought you got ashes from that fight. Okay, so the is your understanding that this came people out use of the larger four-hour video? I don't know if it was four hours, but this clip, that particular clip, that or not, I, I don't want to say clip, but that particular segment for, um, let's see. Ah. I'm sorry, I lost my place. Oh, fuck. Ow, 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 ow. April 22nd, 2017. No, no, I'm just looking for the title. Sorry, so Sandy Hook Vampires like Exposed, what we have for that title Ugh. is this longer one hour long vi video. Okay, well, what I'm, I'm trying to arrest. understand is that some videos, for instance, Owen Shoyer's little five minute video about Mr. Hustle. Yes. That's a clip from a full full episode of the Alex Jones show. Mm -hmm. It's a four hour show, mm -hmm. okay? Um, there are other videos here. For instance, the video we just talked about, uh, what Alex Jones really believes about Sandy Hook, that wasn't from an InfoWars episode, right? Because that's just recorded inside of Mr. Jones' home. You understand? You know what? I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay. I'm sorry. But in other words, there are some times where you might make a little special video just inside his home, might be yeah. a few minutes long. Sometimes they're going to come from a full InfoWars show. Sometimes you might make a special video. Like, yes. I have a special video about you know, Russia games. It's 20 minutes long. Yes. Right? Okay. This video, does this come from an Alex Jones show? Because I'm trying to yeah. find the full video. Yeah, I have, so like I said, uh, our full video, it looks like it was from a full show, and it was more than an hour long. It was at long. least an hour long. My notes go up to an hour. Well, no, that's what I'm trying to get at. An episode of the Alex Jones show is four hours long. Uh, so there, does this come... there, there are three hour segments. Um, so there are three hour segments. You mean, do you mean all three hour segments? There are three three hour segments? No, I mean in general, including the pill stuff, where they're selling the pills and going off on that. Mm -hmm. It takes, you, you, you start watching an Alex Jones episode, it's four hours is the amount of time that passes when it signs off. Oh, okay, so the way that the files are saved by the company, they're not saved in four hour, four hour chunks like that. Okay. So this particular video file that has this particular title, Sandy Hook Vampires Exposed on this date, uh -huh. that's our uh, our name for the document, and it's not four hours long. Do you possess, does the company possess the entire episode of the Alex Jones Show on April 22nd, 2017? I possess this, this, this video uh, under that name, you know, the R-U-N uh, name. It's not four hours, though. The thing Getting is, is yeah, the I'm name Sandy Hook Vampires Exposed, for instance, is a YouTube. Sign off here, please. Right? And that's right. not going to be... No, but the, it's the date of that video. It's the same date. Correct. Right. You're 100% right. right on that. And in fact, what's weird about the InfoWars thing, the, in, the for instance, the Owen Troyer video is June 26, 2017. That actually didn't happen that day. That was actually an Alex Jones episode from June 25th. Right, those are the upload dates. Right. right. So I what I'm trying it. to figure out is someday there was a full episode of the Alex Jones show, which included all these comments that are now in Sandy Hook Vampires Exposed. Mm -hmm. Does the company have that full episode? Because we know this video is not the full episode. Right. So the video that I have, it's definitely longer than the video you have. If, if you say it's only, you know, 40 minutes long, this video that I have for okay. that title on that date is definitely longer than that. So um, I don't know if you don't have this this length of the video and it can be produced to you, that, that's fine. No, what I'm saying... But I don't know if your question to me is, I, do I know whether this is the full Alex Jones show? I don't know. Well, we know it's not, though, right? Because Alex Jones show isn't just an hour long. <sighs> right? I don't, I don't know, in okay. all honesty. And I don't... And like I said, this, this video, it's, this is how it's saved on, you know on our system. Okay, we've talked, I think, about one of the claims in this video, which is that the police found people in the backwoods dressed up in SWAT gear. Does the company Wait, contend that that is second. true? Uh, I think that he was specifically referencing the uh, issue that we were talking about earlier about the individual that was pulled out of the woods and put into the back of the police car and he was wearing SWAT gear. Okay. So that was the basis for that particular claim. Is that true? There is video of an interview with a person who says he saw a person being taken out of the woods in SWAT gear. Really? Yes. Hello, here, sir. Have you seen that video? I have. Okay. So if I needed that, I could get a copy of that. It's in the videos that I watched. So there's a, a witness who was there at Sandy Hook that day, 
right. he was interviewed by the media. Because here's the thing, yeah. I know about a witness, I know about a witness who's on video, mm -hmm. who's talking about a gentleman named Chris Mandifronia. Mm -hmm. Chris Mandifronia is a Sandy Hook parent who came to the school that day. Mm -hmm. He was actually there to help his daughter with a gingerbread house project. Yep. And then he was arrested in the parking lot. He wasn't in the woods or anything. This is not the same thing. Okay, and Mr. Fr Man Mandifronia was wearing camo pants. Right? So, and so what I'm okay. wondering is, I'm trying to figure out, because I, I feel like after three years, I know a lot about Sandy Hook coverage, and the idea that there was a witness in the parking lot that day or something who was talking to the news media and said somebody was arrested in SWAT gear is totally new to me. And so if that video exists, I want to try to be able to figure out where it is. And so do you know what, it, was it in an episode that you saw that? Yeah, so it's in one of these videos. Um, I don't know if it's in my clipped notes. I think that, um, that Alex I remember when these guys a, were really hard uh, to kill. He did a show that was something to the effect of, the title was, um, New York Times makes odd claim or baffling claim about the second shooter, and it might have been in there, but he's shown this clip a number of times on a variety of different uh, episodes. I've seen it multiple times on multiple videos where he cuts to an interview done with a person by a news organization who was there saying he saw a guy get pulled out of the woods. He was wearing camouflage pants. He was in handcuffs. He's saying it wasn't me. Oh boy. I didn't do it, and they put him in the back of a police car. Oh, okay, hold on, because now we're back to camo pants. Yes. All right, not SWAT gear. Well, I think SWAT gear. You know what? Let me let me just think about what he said. Um, Please do. I'm not sure if he said SWAT gear or camouflage pants. Okay. But this is the that is the direct source of that information. So it's very possible that Mr. Jones saw an interview about Chris Mandifronia, a Sandy Hook parent, being briefly detained by police, who happened to be wearing pants that were camouflage, which is pretty common in Sandy Hook area. I don't, you know what, I don't, I don't know, and the reason is because there is also the reference to the, the uh, off-duty SWAT officer that I had been seeing also in here, who's never really identified, I, or he might have been identified, and I just don't know his name, but so it may have been that as well, but those two pieces of information um, in connection with his interview, that's the source. It's also possible that Mr. Jones's claim about somebody being dressed up in the woods in SWAT gear is simply Mr. Jones conflating and confusing mistakenly all these different separate ideas, right? Mandifronia, the reporters in the woods, all of this could just be conflated by Mr. Jones to just carelessly say somebody was arrested in Swagger. You would agree with that? Um, no, I think that the video, I think that the question that he was asking was, I've seen these sources say someone was pulled out of the woods. Uh, and someone was arrested. We've not heard anything about this person. Why haven't we heard anything about this person? I think that there is a legitimate source, a question as to whether or not a person was pulled out of the woods and why and who this person was. And that was his question. It, uh, what do you, I don't, because I don't recall a question. What I recall him saying, I have it written down here, police found people in the backwoods dressed up as well. That was one of the anomalies that he is pointing to as why he was questioning the Sandy Hook story. So he was pointing to the ver those sources. But that's not a question, right? That is, here is an anomaly. Yeah, this in his happened. opinion, yeah, this is an anomaly. This is a, you know, this is something that I think should be answered. It's an anomaly. What's, what needs to be answered? We know who the answer. Who is the person in the woods that was taken out of the woods? Got you. Okay. Yes. So the question is, who is this man in SWAT gear who was arrested? Who is the person that was taken out of the woods? Yes. No, in SWAT gear, right? So, like That's I said, I don't, I, I don't know the exact quote and whether it was SWAT gear or camouflage, but the interview with the person that he was citing said one or the other, and I'm not sure. Well, see, here's the thing. When I deposed Mr. Jones in the deposition you did read, mm -hmm. there was a big discussion of, do you think that somebody wearing camo pants is SWAT gear? This was discussed at length for a good period of that deposition, how those two things are not the same in Mr. Jones' Agreed, those are not the same. They're not the same. No. He's not talking about the guy in camel pants. Right? So I don't I'm wondering... know that he's not talking about the guy in camel pants. So, so quite similarly, and I've seen this by Mr. Jones a couple of times, and 
This is something that he tend that he tends to do, which is this is not a scripted proceeding. This is something he's just thinking out loud. It's coming out as the thoughts are coming, and sometimes he's conflating certain things. So, like this is a perfect example of did Adam Lanza's house burn down or was it bulldozed? So these are something that is maybe uh, not exactly what was said. Maybe it wasn't Swaki or maybe it was camouflage, and it came out when he repeated it as Swaki. But that doesn't mean that the two things he's talking about are different. He might have just characterized it differently and it wasn't the same term that was used. Does that, does that make sense? Sort of. Did he ever correct himself? On the issue of... Saying that the police arrested somebody in SWAT gear. Did he ever make a correction as to whether it was camouflage or SWAT gear? No, I don't think he ever restated the camouflage versus SWAT gear issue. And the reason Mr. Jones might get things wrong like that, saying that a parent in camo pants was in SWAT gear or that a house that was bulldozed was burned down, is because he's not particularly careful with the facts he puts on there. You'd agree with that? I'm, um, I wouldn't say that he's not careful. I'm, like I'm saying, there's no teleprompter it's not previously scripted he comes in in the morning and is just talking and these are his these are his unfiltered opinions based on what he remembers or recalls about certain things so you know you and I are lawyers so obviously we know words matter and so we try to the best of our efforts to use specific words by specific people but he's not an attorney and so he's just off the cuff saying what he remembers of that source. And what he remembered of that source was he remembers somebody in SWAT gear. It may have been instead camouflage pants, but that doesn't change the fact that there was somebody taken out of the woods on that particular day in handcuffs that a witness saw. And that there was a question about whether there was a second okay. shooter. I want to make sure that I have you, because now you basically just stated that. And I want to make sure stated what is fact. That I, want to, I want to know the difference between these two things, if it is fact sure. or if there's a sure report. You seem to claim that Mr. Jones said that he saw reports of someone saying that someone was arrested in the woods, brought out in handcuffs from the woods, right? Yes. In handcuffs, in SWAT gear, pants, or whatever it is. Are you saying that that happened? That or there are you was that witness? That, no, that the company's saying that that happened? Right, I that saw that, that video, just, yes. Okay, okay, just want to make sure that that's where we were. Okay. Um, when you say that, you know, we're lawyers, we know that words matter. Media organizations should know that too, shouldn't they? I think that um, the problem that the plaintiffs have is that this is not a large media organization. And I know you see that there's a lot of disorganization. There's a lot of things that weren't done probably as they should have been done. This was a organization that was put together by someone who got his start in like access, like you know, as a, as a commentator. He started out with like five people in an office and then it's expanded. And I don't think he ever knew how to do that appropriately. Like, I know a lot of lawyers, for example, that really only want to practice law and don't understand the business aspect of practicing law. And so are really, really great attorneys, but are really bad business people. Um, and I think that's what you see here. I think that this is a, uh, an, an organization that grew really quickly from a person who didn't have a lot of savvy as to the business aspect of it, and then uh, found that he had some issues that he had to take care of later on. Well, well I want to make a distinction between the business aspect of it mm -hmm. and the journalism aspect of it. Mr. Jones was very savvy on the business aspect. Do you agree with that? No, I don't agree with that. Okay. Well, now you've got a man who, like you say, started with five people out of public access, and he created a media organization that's pulling in tens and millions of dollars in years in revenue. You, you agree with that? Um, I don't know if it's tens of millions of dollars, but he does pull in revenue from the sale of some uh, of some products, yes. Okay. Well, you read Ms. Karpova's deposition, and yes. you, so you understand that between 2018 and 2016, the company generated $165 million in revenue, right? Whether the revenue is uh, based off of the... I'm sorry, what, what was the number you said? 165 million. Between what years? 2016 and 2018. Let me just review what numbers. I mean, we had the spreadsheets in front of her. That's what she testified to. I don't know why. Yeah, those were the test. I think that was the testimony based on our QuickBooks accounts. Is that correct? I don't think that was her QuickBooks I don't account. remember. 
Um, but in any event, um, I think that, no, I don't agree that the business end of it is run particularly well, if that's the question. Oh, man, I'd hate to see one run poorly because that, that sounds really good to me. I mean, I don't make that kind of money. But that does sound great. It sounds but, good on paper, but when you look to the nitty gritty of it, that money is n there is there is not that kind of money there. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Sure. Let's put that opinion on that. Um, you would agree with me though that for an organization that's generating that kind of revenue, Mr. Jones is not operating the journalism aspect of that business on a level commiserate with the responsibility that would be owed by a business that large or of that large of a viewership. You agree with that? No, because we're not practicing journalism. See, Mr. Jones says he did, right? Like, you read his deposition, he says this is journalism. No, what he said was, I am a pundit, I am a commentator, and a vast majority of what we do is not journalism. I may do journalist, journalism sometimes, it's not mostly what we do. 98% of what we do is commentary, and is pungentry, and is basically a blogger type commenting on, some, on other things we see. It is not journalism. Okay. I mean, I'm having a problem because multiple people have testified to me that they do journalism. And now you're telling me that it's 98% of the time they don't. Is that what Actually, you're I've read a few of the depositions. In fact, I read Mr. Watson's deposition where he was quite clear that he was not a journalist. That's an interesting one. Mr. Watson's is super interesting because that one did, I, I wouldn't surprise me too, because Mr. Watson testified that Mr. Jones doesn't have journalistic ethics because he doesn't feel, he doesn't feel he needs to abide by those ethics because he's not doing journalism. Would you agree with Mr. Watson's conclusion? Um, I think that Mr. Watson, what he was saying was that because we do not practice journalism and we're commentating, that those rules don't really aren't aren't something that they should be aware of or should be practicing just because we're not practicing journalism. So I don't think it's accurate to say, oh well, he doesn't think he should abide by these rules and these are rules he should be abiding by. I don't think that was an that's an accurate characterization of what Mr. Watson said. Well, Mr. Watson directly testified that this board should be held to a lower standard because it's not a, a what he said, mainline journalism operation or middle of the road journalism operation? I don't think it's lower standards. I just think those particular journalistic standards don't apply. Okay. So Mr. Jones doesn't have to be as careful as other media organizations because the nature of what he does isn't careful. It's punditry, right? It's punditry, yes. Okay. When you say that he doesn't have to follow those rules, by rules, one of the things you're referring to is the sort of traditional checks and balances that are found in journalism. I think if you're a journalist and you're doing an investigative reporting, you check your sources and vet your sources. I think that this, the model, the business model of free speech is that they are, they are relying on the source that they are pulling from to vet their own sources. Let's go to paragraph 44. Is this a good time to yeah, use let's the do it. Okay. Let's do it. Right. All right, I want you to go now to uh, paragraph 44. November, you, what date did you say? 18. Eight? 18, okay, the date is just not in the, in the petition. Um, okay, yes. Okay, so first of all, did you watch that video? Yes. Okay, so there's been some discussion, and me and Mr. Jones have talked about this in deposition too, of a Bloomberg email where Bloomberg allegedly sent an email the day before Sandy Hook telling his people get ready for the next 24 hours for a big event. Um, yes. I've been trying to figure out where that comes from. Can you tell me? So, uh, as best as I can see, but let me pull up my handy dandy notebook and I will tell you specifically. All right, so MWD. Okay. Jesus <clears throat> fuck.
uh, mistimed that one. This guy is significantly harder than the last one. While I'm looking, just that particular article um, or email. Mm -hmm. So I think this is another, as far as I can determine, because I did try to look into the source of that claim. As far as I can tell, just based on my interviews with, oh, here it is. <clears throat> um, as far as I can tell, based on the context of that statement and me speaking to Mr. Jones, that email or reference to it is based on uh, this kind of coalition of other mayors that were um, for gun control, so to speak. Um, I believe the Aurora shooting was very close in time to the Sandy Hook shooting. Uh, essentially, there was an uh, internal between Bloomberg and uh, people just in connection with that coalition. Um, uh, I don't know what he's about to do, but I don't like it. The next, whatever the next event is. Oh, he healed. Another Fuck. event is going to happen at some point. And let's be ready to put forth our, you know, be ready to run with it when it happens. As far as it being the day before, I, or a representation about the email going out the day before. I don't see that there's any way that that email went out the day before, or if it went out the day before. I don't know when that email went out. Um, but that's what he's going to say. Okay, so everything you just told me is what Mr. Jones told you? Right. I've not ever laid eyes on such an email. Um, I don't recall seeing any such thing in the production. So based on my communications, that's what it is. And it very well may be another example of, like, for example, in Exhibit 10 where you're seeing house burned down versus it was bulldozed. Um, there's this internal email, and he's representing that it was the day before, when honestly, I'm not really sure when it was or how, how far in relationship it was. You don't even know it was. I don't know where he saw that. No, I don't see the document. As far as that particular thing is. Yeah, uh, Mr. Jones had told me to find this one. I have not been able to look at it. What did you do to try? I asked Mr. Jones. I have spoken to other people, like I said um, earlier, the other employees that I spoke to, uh, and I've looked through the documents that have been produced. Did you read the article Aaron Dykes wrote about this? All right, well, because, I mean, at one point, Mr. Jones is discussing this whole thing. He puts up an article on it, which I don't think is in there. Okay. Um, but it's an article about from Um And apparently talking about this Bloomberg stuff. And I, I'm wondering if that's been getting somewhere. Um, let me just look at my notes. said he referred to Mr. Jones, not Mr. Banks. Right. Do you understand that, Banks? Yes, but I have not spoken to Mr. Banks. That's well, I mean, that's one of the things I want to ask you about. Mr. Dykes, during a substantial period of sending the coverage, was uh, a primary writer. He was a writer. I don't know if he was a primary writer. Okay. He was, I don't think he was in a supervisory position. That's the question. They're enforced on that time. They don't have titles, but that doesn't mean they're not supervisory position, like Kurt Nimmer was in a supervisory writer position in the time period. Okay, and you don't think Aaron Dykes was? I don't think so. In that time period, Kurt Nimmer was the, in that supervisory position. Well, we can talk to you about Aaron Dykes. Well, I mean, you had to come up with, you didn't, 
before this deposition, you didn't know how to air a knife from anybody in the street. And now you're telling me you're not a person. So who did you talk when to? When I talked to, I didn't talk to anybody about knife fights. I talked to people about who was in a supervisory position during that time period, and I was informed it was Kurt Nimmer. Well, there were other people during that time period that supervisory positions. In other departments? Right. As far as I know, Kurt Nimmer was the one who was in the supervisory position at this time. He left around 2018. Editor and checked other writers. There, we, mm, so fact checking, I don't know, so I don't know if that's what he said, but uh, but there is nobody that checks facts like that. So essentially, we're going to hear first, everybody. Info well Wars doesn't now, fact check. The, oh, thank you. The general Whoa. rule is to make sure that your what article is. has more than one source. So there is uh, oh, great. I checking of again. the articles to make sure that they are appropriately backed, but I don't want to say that they are fact checked by anybody. So, for example, now my conversation based on Kit Daniels' uh, interview with him is basically they write the articles in WordPress, and the supervisor, whoever that is, does have access to review that material prior to. But as far as quote fact checking, I don't think that they're doing that. I think they're doing it to make sure that the article is appropriately sourced, but they're not necessarily fact-checking. Okay. Um, you know who Melissa Melton is, right? I'm sorry, I don't. That's Aaron Dyke's wife. She was also a writer at InfoWars during this time. Okay. I mean, in other words, what I'm saying is Aaron and Melissa are the source of a lot of the early Sandy Hook stuff, right? The early Sandy Hook stuff? Yeah. How early are you talking about? Well, I mean, let's go ahead and just talk it anyway from the day of Sandy Hook till about... Let's go ahead and do it from the day of Sandy Hook till about two years out. You would agree with this? Well, Aaron Dykes would have sourced for a significant amount of that material? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. You mean, uh, so here's my, here's my concern, and here's what I, what I think, is that a lot of this material, like I said, is just reposting of other articles that are already out there, right? So, sure, there are articles on Sandy Hook that they were re like, you know, resourcing on a daily basis. So at any given day, the writers are putting out dozens of articles a day. And most of those articles, like we said, are not original content. Most of those articles are, I saw another article in CNN. I saw another article on Drudge. I saw this article. And then re-summarizing it, maybe putting our spin on it or our opinion in there. But ultimately, it's a report on another article. So if she was, Melissa was doing that, between when Sandy Hook happened uh, and 2015 or 2016, sure, I'm sure that's no. she was one this of the writers. If she's one of the writers, that's what she would have been doing. I know. So Aaron Dykes, Melissa Melton. I know if I was fresh, I would be. Right? I have not spoken to them. No. Michael uh, Mikael Thalen. You haven't spoken to him either. No. Okay. Um, let's talk about in that article. I mean, in that video in paragraph 44. Um, the statement that the school was shut down, that's what the records show? What records are being referred to there? I'm sorry, which paragraph are you referring to? I'm referring to the, the final statement on Fanny Oak, which is paragraph 44. Right. It's a November 18th, 2016 video. One of the statements of fact in there was the school was shut down, that's what the records show. What are the records that he's talking about? Which allegation, which paragraph is that allegation in? I'm not even positive it's in the petition. Well, that, that's, that's what I'm asking. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know that that is is made in the in that video, but I okay. will review my notes and we will see. Okay. So in this particular video, there appears to be, um, there's a bunch of claims made in this, in this video, one of which appears to be that the school was shut down, and again, he shows the website to that school and its traffic from 2008 to 2013, and then sites. No, I know that happens. Right. 
is that the school has no internet. I'm talking about later in the video. Mr. Jones said, when that school was shut down, that's what the record is shut down. That's what the record he is referring to is the Wayback Machine. Well, he referred to another, another video that we're going to talk about. He refers to email between the school board and the school. Oh, the school was shut down. I don't know that from this video. That's not in this video. Okay, well, I guess we'll have to get to it. We'll get to that um, the other one is the, the infamous video that Mr. Jones showed of kids going around in circles around the building. You know the video I'm talking about? Uh, I believe it's mostly what he's referring to is some photographs, but there, I think there is a video of kids in a parking lot that he refers to. Yeah, no, I'm going to call it for tonight. Parking. At that, I'll come back to this fight tomorrow. Bush, bright eyed in the bushy tail. Let's just hope my souls are there when I get there. I appreciate you all joining me for this uh, mind-numbing extravaganza of bullshit, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening.